Welcome to the Coliseum in Los Angeles and the last of college football's great intra-city rivalries as the USC Trojans host the Bruins of UCLA. I'm Tom Kelly, and time now for you to meet the rest of our broadcasting crew. First of all, in the booth with me today, not one but two great quarterbacks. Gentlemen to my right, who's a big man at Westwood, Tom Ramsey is in the book with most every Bruin record. And, of course, the gentleman to my left is Paul McDonald, took the Trojans to a national championship, and Paul, like Tom, had a great professional career. We'll talk about quarterbacks today, gentlemen. We'll start with you, Tom, and, of course, we start with Tom Maddox. What a great player this kid is. Well, he really is. Tommy Maddox has been great all year long, great a year ago for the Bruins. He's been putting a lot of points on the board for those Bruins. A great trigger man, Coach Homer Smith. He, he regards the Maddox man as the man with all the weaponry, and one of those big weapons, Sean LaChapelle. Indeed, his favorite receiver, and between the two of them, they know where to find that end zone. We'll turn to Paul McDonald and talk not about a quarterback, but about quarterbacks. Seems to be a bit of a quandary at USC. Reggie Perry or Rob Johnson? Who's going to start today? Well, Tom, Rob Johnson had a rocky game last week against Arizona. So in today's game against the Bruins, it's going to be Reggie Perry, even though he's been inconsistent all season long and indecisive as far as who he throws the ball to. But if he gets enough time, he has the arm strength to get it to the receiver. The one area where Perry is really going to help the Trojans is his ability to run the football and execute the option. He's a big, strong, tough runner and has a great nose for the goal line. All right, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Tom. Time to meet another of our broadcasting team. This is the young fellow who handled the Bruin telecast on Prime Ticket this year. He's down on the sidelines, Bill McDonald. Bill, if you will, a thought or two about the upcoming game. Well, Tom, a couple of quick observations offensively for both teams. First of all, for the Bruins of UCLA, it will be tempo and turnovers. Don't turn it over. It killed them last year. Tempo, a lot of quick huddles, no huddles, quick counts to confuse the Trojan defense. For USC, it's pretty simple. Make the big play. Don't see, be surprised if they go up and over the cornerbacks and very long, very quickly. All right, let's go back upstairs to the guys who are going to be calling the game. And Mr. Kelly, I need from you predictions from the two signal callers. I need to know. Thank you, Bill. I'm glad you brought the subject up Tom Ramsey you get first crack at it you're the visitors well, what about the game who's going to win has been putting some points on the board this year SC has been allowing some I say Bruins by 13 13 Paul McDonald your thoughts why am I not surprised <laughs> I think if USC they haven't been able to score early but if they score early in today's game it's going to be very competitive and they'll be right in it at the end just scoring for the Trojans has been a problem we can't promise you a 45 42 game like last year but it'll be exciting as the Bruins and the Trojans get together for the 61st time stay with us we'll be right back Prime Ticket presents USC versus UCLA football. Brought to you by Isuzu. For styling, features, and price, there's no comparison. By Coors Light, the silver bullet is the right beer now. By Lexus, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. By Great Western family of companies, $40 billion strong. By Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. By Southwest Airlines. Remember what fares were like before Southwest Airlines? By your Southern California Chevrolet and Geo dealers. By Target. Happy Thanksgiving from Target's family to yours. And by your local Lincoln Mercury dealers. Welcome back to the Coliseum here in Los Angeles and of course the showdown crosstown if you will the Bruins of UCLA the Trojans of USC UCLA a favorite coming into this ball game as you see the introduction of seniors for the Trojans number 48 Matt Gee coming out Kurt Barber coming out a moment ago Scott Lockwood uh, fortunately neither Lockwood nor Barber will be able to play for the Trojans today in fact they are busy rehabbing injuries and operations and are looking forward to perhaps a draft call come next spring. The Trojan team waiting in the tunnel, waiting to bounce onto the field here before a crowd that one would expect would be up around 90,000. There are people sitting just about everywhere in all the far corners and reaches of the building as you get a pictorial look at the Coliseum here in Los Angeles. She'll be renovated um, about a year from now. They'll start, or thereabouts, and the 92 season will be the last one to the way the Coliseum is for the Trojans. And then 93 will be a rehabilitation year for the grand old lady. Trojans come into the ball game an underdog. UCLA favored anywhere from five and a half to six points. And there you see the Bruins waiting to come on the field. Tommy Maddox waiting to be introduced along with the rest of the UCLA team. And now the Trojans at the tunnel. Larry Smith right in the opening. And here they come on the field. 
Trojan fans hoping that the crosstown rivalry, the annual bloodletting between themselves and the Bruins will urge this ball club on to its best effort. It'll need its best effort defensively and offensively if it is to match Tommy Maddox and company. They're sending four co-captains out for each of the teams. That's Willie coming out with Gee and Moody. And we've got Darby and Spaulding, Lambert, and of course Maddox out there for the Bruins. UCLA captain Maddox, what is your call? Tails. Tails he calls. Tails. Well, Tails is the call. It is Tails. UCLA has a choice. UCLA elects to defer until the second half. USC, you have the choice to kick receiver, defend a goal. You will receive. UCLA will kick which goal do you want to defend? Turn them around, gentlemen. USC will receive to start the ball game. Gentlemen, let's play football. That is referee Bill Richardson. There's head coach Larry Smith. As you heard him, the Bruins won the toss, deferred. They will have the ball to start the second half. Trojans will receive, and SC will get the ball first. Against UCLA as head coach at SC, Larry Smith is uh, without a loss in the last four meetings. The last time the two teams met here two years ago was 10-10. Last year, of course, 45-42, the Trojans over the Bruins in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Let's check the uh, lineups as Smith talks with his uh, club across the way. There's Reggie Perry, who will be starting. He'll be at the quarterback spot. Sophomore from Denison, Texas, has thrown only one touchdown pass all year, and that is not a lot. Johnny Morton, his top receiver. Morton has caught 46 uh, passes, none in the end zone. Creighton will be the tailback. Bender, Conway, and Jackson, the other skill position people. Michael Moody, the senior from San Francisco, off, uh, anchors the offensive line. Derek Deese, in and out of the lineups, will start today. Gibson at center, uh, Polak and Baselli at guard and tackle on the left side. And there you look at the Bruins, who will be kicking off, and that'll be Sandifer, number 28, on the kickoff unit for Terry Dunahue. Brian Kelly anchors the defensive line for the Bruins as they'll go on defense. Walker is a busy man in the middle, and Chalinski, a very talented performer up front. Arnold Alley, who transferred from Notre Dame, is having a magnificent season for the Bruins. Cole, Malone, and Greedy are a bunch of ball-hungry, heavy-hitting linebackers, to be sure. And the secondary, led by Matt Darby and Carlton Gray, Lambert and Henderson, a tough group to throw the ball over or under or to get it passed into the end zone. We expect it'll be an outstanding confrontation here today as the Trojans get set to receive and the Bruins get set to kick it off. Trojans uh, will drop back Curtis Conway along with Travis Hanna as Terry Donahue huddles on the side. I believe that's Rick Neuheisel. Is it not Tom Ramsey right up there next to him? Yeah, I just the other side of him, yeah. There's Terry going over a last second thought or two. Five, nine, and one is his record uh, against the Trojans as the head coach at UCLA. His entire life, except for a brief sojourn at Kansas, has been spent as a Bruin. Came out of Notre Dame High and Sherman Oaks and has been a Bruin as a player and coach. All right, teams are set. Today's kickoff is brought to you by Coors Light, the silver bullet, the right beer now. The ball's in the air and the game is underway and the kickoff is coming to the sideline. Is going to bounce out of bounds at the 10. The Trojans will have the option, take it at the 35, force the Bruins to kick it over again, or what have you. Boy, that was a pretty weak kick, Tom Ramsey. Uh, what, uh, were they trying to squib that thing and keep it away from Curtis Conway? Well, it's kind of interesting. UCLA, on the year, winning a lot of the tosses, but electing to defer. Yeah, that seems to be the new word this year. Yeah, it defer. is. Defer. Yeah, you know, can I tell you something, gentlemen? I don't think... If it comes down to the kicking game, either team is really in great shape. I don't know that uh, Dudum hasn't hit a field goal yet, and Cole Ford is out, which would give the Trojans an edge, but I think it's pretty much a toss-up when you come to the kicking game in this one here this afternoon. So Reggie Perry walks to the line of scrimmage, which is the Trojan 35-yard line. Bender, Estrus Creighton in the tailback position of the eye. To give to Creighton, no. Perry, a play-action fake, and going downfield. Guys bumped together, and there is no flag, and there is no completion, as Carlton Gray was downfield with Curtis Conway. The two came together while the ball was in the air, but no flag on the play. 
One thing USC wanted to do in today's game was try and run some play action to get a guy deep on the post pattern. It worked here. The safety came up to take the crossing route. But this is just a fine play by Carlton Gray, making plays all year long, Tom Ramsey. Yeah, Carlton Gray, really Johnny on the spot all year long. Second down, they give to Creighton. Slants over the left side, gets to about the 37-yard line. A gain of two, and it's going to be third down and about eight yards to go. That's Baselli, number 71, Creighton, number 23. For the Bruins, Malone and Cole, inside, outside linebackers were there to make the principal hit. Ball is at the Trojan 37, third down and eight for Reggie Perry. Well, at least he showed a pretty strong arm, didn't he, quarterback, he on that to, near he miss? He get it down the field, there's no doubt about it. Doesn't count unless you catch it, though. <laughs> that always helps. Throwing is only half the battle. Perry out of the shotgun with third and eight. Here come the Bruins. He's got some time right over the middle. Crossing pattern threw it between them. He had number one Wallace coming across. He had Creighton coming across, and he missed them both. And so it'll be a punting situation for the Trojans. Three downs and kick it away, and we'll see about the Bruins when they get to handle the football. Dropping all the way back is La Chapelle. Not only is he a fine receiver, but a good uh, kick returner as well. That incompletion is a great symbolic uh, play as far as how Reggie Perry has played all year long. Not very accurate, not very decisive as far as who he's throwing it to. Bruins uh, with a modest rush, and Dale hits it. An end-over-end -end low kick. Bounces at the 25, and uh, La Chapelle lets it roll inside the 20 to the 17, and UCLA will take over first and 10 at the 17-yard line. 46 yards on that kick, and no return. Let's check the Bruins offensively. First, for Terry Dunning, whose club, of course, Maddox will be there at the quarterback spot. That's almost saying enough. Sophomore out of Bedford, Texas. Sean La Chapelle is favorite receiver. Williams the tailback. Carter, Richardson, and Daly at the other skill position spot. Scott Spaulding, one of the co-captains, anchors the offensive line. First down, Bruins. The ball is at the 17-yard line. Maddox may be changing up at the line of scrimmage. Is he, Tom Ramsey? Uh, he's going to be checking up the line of scrimmage all day long. Right straight up the middle of the field into the secondary goes Williams. And the back who's rushing for 1,000 yards gets 17. He's just a handful away from 1,000 yards, coming in with 958. And now he gets 17 more as the Trojan defense either over-pursued Paul McDonald or just wasn't there. Well, really, uh, I'll speak for Paul this time. They really want to get the ball to Kevin Williams here, really taking the load off Tommy Maddox. And right there you see the burst by Kevin Williams. That brings him up to 975 yards. He's looking for a thousand yard regular season. Something untoward would have to happen to keep him from that. Maddox rolling, throws back. It's complete. Caught at the 41 yard line by Daly is tight end. Daly making the tack of the uh, catch as the ball is marked. Caught at the 42 yard line. That was a fine throw by Maddox on that throwing, running to the right, throwing back to the left. That's why he's had such a great year. What a talent. Going to be second down and about three yards to go. Ball is at the Bruin 41, caught up the 42-yard line. Long count, handoff. Williams comes back, gets hit, and is dropped. There the media was Webb, first of all, as he cut back, hoping to get against the flow. And Webb was there to stop him for a loss of about one. That'll bring up third and about four in the ball of the Bruin 41-yard line. Yeah, so if there's anything UCLA would like to avoid today against the Trojans, it's that it's that play that you lose yardage on. And of course, it's really an understatement, but anytime you grant them any momentum, it's an awfully tough uh, third yardage situation right here at third and four for the Bruins. Max is split. Maddox brings him up to the line of scrimmage, and he's Rolling to his left. Arm cock being chased, being hit and dropped. Hit for a loss. In there was Webb again. David Webb, who they say is too small and too light to play that position, nonetheless was a thorn in the side of Tommy Maddox and the Bruins, dropping him back at the 37-yard line, and a kicking situation will result. Where Webb's having a great year and coming up with play after play, his quickness, irrespective of his size, has been the factor all year for him situation the snap, no rush Trojans have a return on the left-footed effort coming to about the 24 yard line taken there by Conway looking for a break finds some open daylight cutting to the side back again dropped as he gets to the Bruin 45 
big return by Curtis Conway gives the ball to the Trojans at the Bruin 45-yard line. 27 yards on the return of that kick. Trojans will have the ball in great field position. We'll be back after this message. Today's game is brought to you by Isuzu. For styling, features, and price, there's no comparison. By Southwest Airlines. Remember what fares were like before Southwest Airlines? And by the men and women of Northrop. Trojans have the football on the 45-yard line of UCLA. Perry rolling. Going left, looking, throws downfield. Intercepted. Picked off at the 20. Back to the 25 about the 27-yard line. Gray comes up with the interception. That's his 10th of the year. Pass intended for Johnny Morton through his hands, and Gray was Johnny on the spot. Well, it looks as though Perry really forced out of the pocket here and forces the ball downfield, Paul McDonald, but better yet, Carlton Gray right there with a took ball, but I Johnny think it Martin. might be a loss, I'm sorry, for, for UCLA. Carlton Gray looks like he turns his ankle oh, and wow. he's down on the play. That would be a big loss. In point of fact, happen. gentlemen, I thought that uh, Morton should have caught oh, that. Morton's got to make that catch. the hands that he's got, he's got to make that catch. Tom and Tom, Morton's got to make that catch. There's no question about it. And he's been the sure-handed receiver for the Trojans all year long. The guy you can go to in the clutch and the guy that will make that play when you need it. Perry throws still another interception, although in his defense... It really looked uh, from here as though Johnny Morton, who is a gifted receiver, should have pulled that one in. Terry Donahue watches as Gray has helped to his feet. He'll be coming off the field. Uh, obviously, the defense comes off and the offense comes on. So the first turnover of the game goes to the Bruins and to this young man, Gray, who's had a truly magnificent season, his 10th interception. He's from Cincinnati, Ohio, and just a junior. So Carlton Gray is going to be a fixture in that backfield for at least another season. And this is the thing that has hurt the Trojans all season long. The defense can three and out for the, uh, the other team's offense. They all, and then the USC's offense on the field, throw an interception, fumble, penalty, things like that have hurt them all year long. Maddox starts at his own 25-yard line. Backs up into the shotgun. High snap, hands off on the delay. Trying to find some running room with Smith and finds little or none as he gets just to the line of scrimmage. That play never got going, Tom Ramsey. Well, really a slow developing play by UCLA. It looked like they did have a little trouble with the snap, snap as Tom Kelly alluded to, but Kevin Smith filling in for the injured Khalif Carter uh, this week. Khalif Carter, of course, hurt down with a knee injury. It'll be second down for the Bruins as uh, now out of the game limping and being helped off the field is David Webb, number 44. It's like someone's holding on to his leg. That's the way it is, life in the pits. Well, that's, uh, you get the same feeling trying to run across the freeway and rush out of the the guy who plays inside linebacker. Wow. Second down up under center is Maddox back to pass. Has plenty of time, nice protection, steps up, throws, complete, then drop. Maybe a fumble. Now, a very late call by the umpire, gentlemen, who really waited a long time before he signaled that it was not a fair or a completion. Merle was there to put the hit on Williams, who came out of the backfield to cross on a little slant pattern. Well, that was third down. Maddox is so cool, though. He stands back there. Everyone's covered. He doesn't get hurried and run out of the pocket. He stands and finds a late receiver. USC's defender made a super hit. Shotgun again. Adams is flanked to the bottom of your screen. And Maddox is in the shotgun at his own 25-yard line. Again, the delay. The give to Williams. Outside. Breaks a tackle. Breaks another. First down as he crosses the 35. Salmon was there to make the stop. 12 yards on the pickup. And now, Kevin Williams on that little delay is now up to 987 yards as he's rushing toward a 1,000-yard season. Well, Kevin Williams averaging 6.5 yards a carry. This is what he does so well. He does well after he breaks the line of scrimmage, and then he's breaking tackles. Right there, he was hit with probably with a few more yards to go for the first down, but that time dragging Salmon over the first down marker. Mark it out at the 37. First and 10, UCLA. High formation for Maddox and company. Right over the middle, upfield complete to La Chapelle at the 40. 
Good running move by La Chapelle. Fights off tacklers to the Trojan 34-yard line. What a fine move. Once he got the ball, he certainly knows a north and south route. 28 yards on the completion. And another first down for UCLA. Well, La Chapelle has been the go-to guy all year long. Right here, Tommy Maddox, seeing number 88, splitting the middle defenders. Right there, you're going to see La Chapelle doing a fine job recognizing, looking around, you see his head's on a swivel, trying to elude those SC defenders. I'd want to elude those guys, too. <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> he running around back there. Miss, didn't he? Ball is at the Trojan 35-yard line. Just nosed up to it. Backs a split. Maddox with the first down. Quick little out to Adams, and Adams at the sideline is hit and drop, but not before he gets to the Trojan 27-yard line, where Oliver and Merle are there to make the stop. Let's go to Bill McDonald down on the sidelines. Bill? Tom got a quick report on Carlton Gray. He turned the same ankle that he injured in the Stanford game a couple of weeks ago. They haven't taken off the tape, haven't taken off the shoe. Carlton's trying to work it out on the sideline. We expect to see him when the Bruins come back on defense. Second down and two for the Bruins. Maddox has it at the Trojan, 27. No score in the ball game. High formation. Give to the tailback. Williams starts in, goes out. He's quick enough to get away from most everybody. Finally, he is blocked off his feet. Coming up was... Holmes, and they drop him at about the 22-yard line, but that's more than enough for another first and 10 UCLA. Once again, one of the philosophies offensively for UCLA, they want to get off the hash mark. They're right there. They're on the right hash mark. They want to give it to Kevin Williams. Let him run to the wide side of the field. You see a nice move there on the safety step on pace, and then he's going to take it right over the corner. Holmes that time for the first down. I've got him unofficially at 992. He's got 33 yards so far here today. On the way to a thousand-yard rushing season, he being Kevin Williams on a spring Texas high formation. First down, UCLA. No score. They're at the coach at 22. Again, the give to Williams. Cuts back, gets hit, but drags tacklers. Flags down on the field across the way. The guy who made the stop was Holland eventually, and we'll see the disposition of the flag. First flag we've had of the afternoon, gentlemen, and we've got 8.52 remaining in the first period. Holding, says referee Richardson, against UCLA. That's got to hurt the Bruin drive. You don't, you never like to see that, Tom. Uh, you're driving the ball, you got a holding penalty, now you're looking at uh, second, first and 20, second and 20. See what they've got, the flag at the 22, 23 yard line, which is gonna walk it back Still to about the 33. The Bruins have had problems all year long inside the plus territory, as Paul Wells knows. The red zone, the, the attacking zone you want to go to before you score score into the opponent's territory. It's been awfully tough for UCLA. A lot of penalties, some turnovers throughout the year. Well, it remains first down. Market at the Trojan 33. And for the sake of argument, first call it first and 20. First and 20 for UCLA. Triple receivers. Make it double receivers. Williams comes out. up under center. No score, first period. Long count. Back to throw. Right over the middle, nobody there. Uh, La Chapelle, perhaps his intended receiver, maybe even Adams. A lot of indecision, it seemed, Tom Ramsey. In fact, I don't know if he called what he wanted to call when he finally got the snap. Well, it's interesting. I was looking at the top of the screen. I saw Ricky Davis who's a backup tailback lined up at a, at a split receiver, and he ran a quick little hitch and go, and Tommy Maddox just didn't see him. Didn't see it, but again, La Chapelle's been a great receiver. Maybe too great. Maybe Ramsey, uh, Tom Ramsey, maybe uh, Maddox looks at him too much. and his knee goes down at about the 23-yard line, which is going to be a gain of about nine. Maury Toy making a very nice uh, catch and run to the 23. It'll be third and 10 for UCLA at the Trojan 23. Gideon Merle making the stop for the Trojans. No score, 7.57. Time remaining in this first period. Big crowd on hand. I would imagine the tally will be close to 90,000. Richardson is wide to the left along with La Chapelle. And now, either timeout or a delay of game. Looks like a timeout. USC. 
SC is taking time out with 7.42 to go in the first period. So far, it's scoreless. We'll be back right after this important message. Welcome back to the Coliseum. There's no score here in the first period. Bruins have the ball with 7.42 to go. And high above the Coliseum, you saw that shot a moment ago, the airship Columbia, the Goodyear blimp. Pilots Joel Chamberlain, and the cameraman is Richard Markle. Thank you, gentlemen, for an amazingly fine set of pictures on a beautiful afternoon. Maddox is four of six for 49 yards. He's at the Trojan 23, and back to throw. Lobs it for the end zone, too far, just out of the reach of La Chapelle, who had a lot of attention, gentlemen, with a double coverage down there on the famed receiver. I was going to say, that time, Sam had coming over from his free safety position to have a little in-and-out coverage at number 88. Well, the Trojans are not good enough to cover La Chapelle man for man, and they're going to have to double him uh, most of the game, stop him. Down on the field, a Bruin is down. It could be uh, Nowitzki. It is Nowitzki, the uh, left tackle. 6'6", 276, a sophomore from Woodbridge, Virginia. Much of the success of the running game has been attributed to the offensive line. And look, he gets leg whipped. Oh, gosh. The back of the legs. It's a lineman's a worst nightmare, anyone's worst nightmare that puts on a football helmet. You wouldn't think people that size could be injured, and yet uh, the people that size that across the line from them that are there to injure them, huh? That's oh, yeah. amazing. Maddox is getting some conversation from New Heisel, former quarterback for the Bruins. Probably tell him he didn't wait long enough or put enough air into that. Let, let La Chapelle run underneath it. He threw it more on a line, and he finally broke loose there after a while. You got to put air into the ball, ball though, to let him run under it. Nowitzki, we're happy to report, is up and walking off the field under his own power. Total yards for the Bruins, 82 for the Trojans, only two so far in this first half. 7:27, 7:37, the time remaining, and there is no score, and the ball remains at the SC 24-yard line. This will be a 41-yard field goal try. Sandifer, excuse me, Perez, 41-yard try. His longest, 44 this year. Line is set. It's down and he hits it. It's got the distance, and it's good. So Perez gets the Bruins on the board with a 41-yard field goal to put UCLA on top, 3-0. Seven and a half minutes remain in the first period. We'll be back with more of this crosstown rivalry after this. 41-yard field goal by Luis Perez gives the Bruins a fresh blood here. 3-0. They lead. Remember, for all the scores, highlights, interviews, and the rest, turn on Press Box with Larry Burnett, Alan Massingale, and the rest of the Press Box team. Sunday through Friday at 10 on Prime Ticket. Kick off to Conway, and he struggles back up over the 30 to about the 32-yard line. Let's see. We'll have a first and 10 at that point on their 32-yard line. Boy, UCLA does not want to give the ball to Curtis Conway with all that room to run with his speed. Had that one putt return, ran that back for 27 yards or so, and uh, continued to squibble. All right, let's go to Bill McDonald down on the sidelines. Gentlemen, a couple things to watch on this drive when SCI is on offense. One thing, they want to get Estrus Creighton involved in the passing game. That's one of the reasons why he's starting. He's such a great receiver. And with Reggie Perry moving both left and right and moving the pocket, watch for UCLA pressuring from the corners. Let's go back upstairs, start the drive. Perry with a play-action fake, rolling to the near sidelines, looking, throws on the run. Pass is caught. It'll be at the 49-yard line. Great catch by Morton, despite the presence of Dion Lambert. And that gentleman brings back the thought of over the go, that pass that went right through Morton's hands, intercepted by Gray. Man's too great a receiver to miss those. Very similar play, a crossing route. The Trojans love to run this sort of thing. And all he's running here is get open, give me the ball, and Perry puts it right on. Nice catch for the first down. 19 yards on that reception. SC now, second time they've been inside the Bruin 50. First down and 10 at the Bruin 49-yard line. Perry rolling left, being chased, and being hit and dropped. Drops the ball, but I believe SC fell on it. Chalinski came into that backfield about the same time the football did, and Creighton was there to recover the bobble by Perry back at the Trojan 45. Going to be a loss of six, second and 16. 
as you said, Mike Shalinski really bearing down on the backside of Reggie Perry this time. And right when he gets there, I believe, here's James Malone, number 58. He's going to cause the fumble. You see the ball come out right there. That is Creighton right there to fall on the loose ball. Second down and 16 at the Trojan. Line of scrimmage, movement up front. Tackle on the right side, move. That's Baselli and Larry Smith, who has seen Paul McDonald. This happened time after time after time this year. Just looks on as if it's a movie that he's been, uh, came in the middle of. A nightmare, more likely, than uh, just any old movie. But mental mistake, it's all it is. And they've done it year, uh, game after game, all year long. Before that, though, Reggie Perry, again, a little careless with the football. Looked like he was trying to throw it left-handed. And he tries to come up at times with these big plays when they're not there. And many times it's come back to hurt him. Of course, the great was there to cover the fumble. Could have been a big turnover for UCLA. That brings it, though, to second down and 21 now for the Trojans. Well, a moment ago, we're looking at a first and 10 at the Bruin 49. Now shut back to their own 39. And Perry comes to the line of scrimmage. 3 nothing. Bruins lead. Six minutes remaining in the first period. A lot of traditionals today. We'll get to some scores later. Perry's pass caught again. This time a fine reception by uh, Curtis Conway. And I mean Gray, who already has one interception to bring his yearly total to 10, was almost right there. Does he gamble a lot on that defensive position, Tom Ramsey? Well, it is good to see Carl DeGray back. And he does. He is a very gambling corner out there. He knows they're coming to the wide side of the field right there. Conway does make a marvelous catch, but great just a step late. Looks like they're uh, setting him up maybe for the little out and up. Tom Ramsey, <laughs> what do you think? I think Curtis Conway definitely has the speed to go out and up on anybody. <laughs> Brings up a third down and 12. The ball now at the Trojan 49-yard line. Three nothing in favor of the Bruins. Perry back to throw. Steps up, looking. Throws a bad pass. Would not have gained anything had it been completed to Creighton. Darby was all over him. And that play really didn't offer much at all in the way of moving it downfield. I just want to ask Paul McDonald, knowing the, the USC quarterback tradition and situation, Reggie Perry is asked to throw in third down situations. And really, I look at Rob Johnson, the young freshman, a week ago got his first start. There was question that he might play. Yeah, there was question. And, and Perry is not your classic drop back passer. You can't ask the guy on third down to, to sit in there and fire down the field for the completion. It's just too difficult for him to do right now. That uh, leap by Dale saved the snap over his head. La Chappelle in a crowd of Cardinal jerseys goes down at the Bruin 12-yard line. Boy, I tell you, Cole, uh, the kick uh, by Dale was magnificent. 41 yards, six-yard return. Cunningham was there to make the stop, and that snap by Rapp very nearly sailed over his head, and that would have been a disastrous moment for us. Uh, it'll be the 17-yard line as UCLA starts first and 10. They lead 3-0. Really impressed today, Tom Ramsey, by the balance that UCLA has. The ability to run the ball and throw the ball equally well. Now, just part of Homer Smith's total package. He really believes going to the SC game, you have to be completely balanced. Play action to Williams. And in fact, they give it to Williams, who struggles ahead to the 19-yard line. There to make the stop for the Trojans was Matt Gee. And at the bottom of the pile, big number 78 is Terry McDaniels. Matt Gee's been the stalwart for USC all year long, leading the team in tackles. Very unsung uh, player back there, but always around the football. Wide to the left is Michael Moore. La Chappelle flanked to the opener, wide side of the field, the right side. Smith in there along with Williams at the tailback spot, and it's the give to Williams, and he slants over the right side, squirms his way out close to the 25-yard line. Boy, he's got a great first step, hasn't he? And he can find that little crack, that little seam. He's very, very tough as a runner. He really does. He really does have a, a great first step. And a lot of others, I asked Coach Homer Smith before the game, how many times do you want Kevin Waves to carry the ball? And he said, as many as he can. Wow. So really, they want to get Kevin Waves the ball. Just uh, quite an explosive runner and a big play. You know, SC, I thought, had a tailback situation. But I'm wondering why this kid's been struggling to get that number one spot. He's a magnificent runner. All right, third down and about two at the Bruin 25. Maddox up under center. And back to pass. Has time. Throws complete. Bye-bye, Troy at the 30. 35 up to about the 37-yard line. Another
another big play of about 12 yards. And Maddox converts that third into a first and 10 UCLA at the Trojan 37-yard line. Well, Maddox doing a great job. Paul McDonald said earlier, he comes off to his backs. And right here, any good quarterback knows, underneath, you got man coverage. Maury Toy, third down receiver coming out of the backfield, making a fine play. Trojans seem to have that uh, spot wide open underneath. Did they not, Paul McDonald? They really did. They were, they were bailing out of there on third and three or third and four. You got to play a little tighter than that. UCLA throws like 85% in that situation, so they knew it was coming. High formation and the play action fake. Maddox on the roll. Throws up field. Intercepted. Picked off by Calvin Holmes at midfield. 45, 40, 35. Holmes battles his way down to the Bruin 30. And for Calvin Holmes, what a rare treat indeed. Much maligned. In fact, he's been burned many times by almost everybody that SC has played this year. And that interception for Calvin Holmes, his second of the year. And I tell you, as sweet as any he's ever had. Well, Tommy Maddox has had this problem all year long. The play action fake to Kevin Waves. He doesn't see Calvin Holmes, the corner, drop off. And I'm going to let Paul McDonald take over from here. You, you got to watch that corner on that corner route, as you uh, as you said, Tom Ramsey. If you don't, this is what's going to happen. He'll fall right back into it. And as Tom Kelly said, what a great play for somebody that's had so many problems all year long. Turn this game around for the Trojans. All right, first down with a play action handoff to Creighton. And he was slipping and sliding, but by the time he got himself pointed in the north-south direction, he was down at the 31. Argo was there to make the stop. And that'll make it second and eight after a gain of two at the Bruin 31-yard line. Out of the game goes Conway for the Trojans, and in the ball game, Yanni Jackson. To follow up that conversation, Tom Ramsey, you know, Maddox is a great player, but one thing he has done is he's thrown a lot of interceptions. I think in order to try to create the big play, you fall into some situations that you allow the other team to step in and make the big play as well. well that's his 15th of the year. Had that number a year ago. Low setback, Bender the fullback, and boy, what a pile of humanity as he gets barely to the 27-yard line. Calvin There's Holmes. Calvin, Calvin Holmes on the sideline. Second interception this year, Calvin. Congratulations. You have been the brunt of a lot of bad jokes. <laughs> Pick one off like that in this big ball game has to give you a great feeling indeed. Marked it at the 27, third and four after a gain of four by the fullback. That's under three minutes to go here in this first period. Three nothing Bruins lead. Now wide to the left side, Wallace. Wider still to the left is Conway. Backs a split. Big play time at third and four for Reggie Perry. Under center Gibson. Here's the rush. Perry to throw it. Has his back. Threw it behind him. Had Conway wide open on a fine move against a fine defensive back, Gray. But he had great beat if Perry had only gotten the ball to him. Quarterbacks, that's got to make you feel bad when you throw it. And the guy is there, but you don't get it to him. Yeah, Reggie Perry had perfect protection. They came with the blitz. They picked up. It's what you, you, you dream about. You got one-on-one -on -one outside. Just get him the ball. It's pitch and catch, Tom Ramsey. Really was a prime example of having enough time to throw, but just not delivering. Well, here's J.J. Dudum, who's going to try a field goal of 45 yards. He's a walk-on. Cole Ford, having injured a uh, muscle in his left hip. Mike Salmon will hold the snap. It's down. There's the kick that is nowhere near long enough. And so the Trojans, wide to the left, miss an opportunity to tie this game at three. Really surprising they don't go for it on fourth down because... As we've seen all year, Tom Kelly, he hasn't hit those. He's been very inconsistent. He's a walk-on, as you said. He hasn't been in this kind of a situation in this game. You might want to go for it on fourth down. It's fourth and three, fourth and four. Hey, this is the season for USC. They've got to win this thing. Let me take a moment to take you back to another moment in this great series, the Crosstown flashback, if you will. I will take you all the way back to the year 1937. One of the greatest athletes to ever play the game. For the Bruins, Kenny Washington. SC was leading in this ball game 19 to nothing when Kenny Washington turned loose a magnificent toss, 67 yards to Hal Hershon. That gave the Bruins a touchdown. SC prevailed 19 to 13. But Kenny Washington, what a magnificent player, just one of hundreds that this series has produced. Maddox rolling, pitches back to his tailback. William turns the corner and may be gone at the 40. At the 20, no one's going to catch him. Touchdown, UCLA, 72 yards on a little option play. And something the Trojans obviously practice against 
every day of the week, and the Bruins ran it to perfection. Tom Ramsey, there's an article about why UCLA runs the option to subject Tommy Maddox to hits, but I guess this is a reason why. Well, right here, I said earlier, they want to get the ball at Kevin Williams to the wide side of the field, and right there, you're going to see the stallion take off in a lot of open territory. He just flat out outruns everybody to the end zone. Well, not only did Williams go past 1,000, he went past 1,100 with that. He has 113 <laughs> yards now, and 1,071. I've got him for 1,105. a few but he's up there in the paint car the PAT is good and so with 220 remaining in this first period the Bruins with a dazzling bit of speed by one Mr. Kevin Williams put the Trojans down by 10 points 10 nothing now in favor of UCLA right there you said Maddox they don't want to get Maddox hit but he pitches the ball early enough, and he just runs right by Stephon Pace, and Salmon's really not a factor. Kevin Williams, just a sprinter all the way. And Boy, he's fast. <laughs> no one's going to catch that guy. But this has been a problem all year for USC. They come up with the interception. They go three downs and out on offense. The defense kind of deflates a little bit. Say, gee, we did our part. Offense can't do it. Then they come right back and score a long touchdown. Happen. How many times has that happened, Tom Kelly? All year long, it seems. Even in the games, uh, the three that the Trojans have won, it has happened. And of course, in the games they've lost, it has happened with uh, much more frequency. So the Bruins will kick off, leading 10 to nothing. As you look downfield, Curtis Conway, one of two return men for the Trojans, and the ball is high, coming to Travis Hanna at the 11 yard line. Has a wedge of blockers looking for some room to run to get to him and can. He was on the far side of the field. The blocking wedge was on this side of the field. By the time the two got anywhere near each other, why, Travis was down at the Trojan 26-yard line. So the Trojans now down 10 to nothing. They've had the ball twice inside Bruin territory and came up empty on both occasions. 174 yards to 29. And of course, 72 of that 174 on that last gallop by Kevin Williams. Reggie Perry at quarterback. Sends Creighton in motion. The snap. Perry throws. Pass might have been intended for Yanni Jackson, but it was nowhere near him. And Jackson really had no chance to catch it. Well, Reggie put a lot of heat on that one. It's going to be very difficult. When you settle in that zone, you got to put it right on them. You can't have them reach for the ball. You're not going to have many completions that way. Now, it's very easy to criticize a guy who throws the ball and nobody catches it. But I think one must remember that occasionally receivers run the wrong routes. And a guy goes back, a timing thing turns and throws it where the guy's supposed to be. And if he's not there, then it goes into the books as an incomplete pass and the quarterback suffers. Second down. Running the option, they give it to the fullback, and Fender gets a couple of yards at the most. Bodies flying everywhere. It'll be third down for the Trojans, and the ball will be at the SC 28-yard line. It's going to be third and about eight. One thing UCLA has done this year has been stopped to run. Much better than last year, and this is going to be a problem, I know, for USC, because they're planning on running the football. And one reason, Bruce Walker, number 49, right there, he's been a big, huge impact player for UCLA. His play, along with Brian Kelly up front and Arnold Ale at the linebacker position, really doing a fine job up front. Third down and seven. SC with the ball at its own 29-yard line. 10-0, Bruins lead. Perry straight back to throw. Crossing pattern into and out of the hands of Curtis Conway. Gray was there defensively, and that'll force the Trojans into a kicking situation. It appears that numbers three and three are going to be talking to each other all afternoon. Well, Carlton Gray goes on the best receiver that USC has, and every week he does this. He's with him step for step, but, you know, Curtis Conway has got to make that catch. Tough catch out in front, but went through his hands. Need that play for the first down. Well, Perry has not had a great afternoon so far, but he's been victimized. Morton dropped one. Now Conway drops one. And now back to kick is Dale and hits it. 
end over end coming to La Chapelle at the 33. 35, nice move, flag down. He's at midfield in the sidelines and out of bounds in front of the Trojan bench, but a flag back downfield at about the 38 is going to negate that kick return by La Chapelle. It was a 38-yard boot and a 20-yard return, but one expects blocking below the waist or some such call. There it is, clipping. That'll bring it back and walk off some yardage against UCLA. Well, whenever you see somebody go flying by the ball carrier, <laughs> you're gonna, they're penalty just... is clipping against the return team. 15 yards and forced from the spot of the foul. First down. The official is going to reach for the flag, and there it is. Doesn't quite get his helmet on the front side of Junior Moy's shoulder pad, and that's why the flag was thrown. The 35, Bradley Craig that time. I'm sorry, Tom Kelly. That's all right. I'm just going to say they're bringing it back to the 23. Go ahead, Tom. Well, I was going to say just what Paul said. You really you can't afford a penalty like that. It's the, the, the guy may just run by the punt returner, just lay off. Show the referee your hands and, and don't get involved with the block. I like that move by uh, La Chapelle, though. I mean, he gave him the, 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 the stiff leg or something. What did he give him? They gave him a jelly leg. leg. Yeah. He gave him a loose leg. Like. <laughs> Real jelly leg routine. Straight ahead, that's that Smith carrying for the Bruins over the 25, out close to the 28-yard line. Second down and about five when they unpile it. But you can see how this guy is so tough to bring down once you get the ball to him in full stride because this kid's got some moves of a running back. No question about it. Maddox says he's real deceptive, he's big, strong. People will think he's fast, but he is very uh, movie. He's got the moves that can shake you. Extreme, and he's 6'4", too. Extremely quick. All right, they marked it at the 27, so it's going to be second and six at that point. UCLA with a half minute to go in the first period, leading 10 to nothing. The ball again belongs to the Bruins, and Maddox keeps it rolling, looking to throw. Comes down the sidelines, incomplete. There was Holmes up there in the air with La Chapelle. And let me tell you about that mismatch. I just told you La Chapelle is 6'4". Well, Calvin Holmes is 5'9", stretched all the way out. If you think that is the mismatch, and if you think that Maddox doesn't realize that, then you're not paying attention. Yeah, La Chapelle, really, you mentioned he's 6'4", and he's so physical. He, he runs he, right there. He leads the Pac-10, 64 receptions, but he's so physical he can get the get off the line of scrimmage, get through the defender, and get into his route. Maddox at time just had to wait a little too long. Third down at the 27. Maddox, 5 of 10 for 39 yards. Long count, back to split. Out of the lousing, obviously. Back to throw with a ton of time. Comes out in the flat. Pass is caught. Williams, how tough can you be? Excuse me, toying with it. He's hit by not only Holmes, but Stefan Pace and Hollingquist as well. And finally, he goes down at about the 33-yard line and very close. We'll wait for the mark to a first down. Boy, oh, I like that decision in, in Tommy Maddox. You know, everyone's soft. Throw it underneath. Get it to your speed back. He'll make, he'll break a ta tackle or two, maybe get the first down instead of trying to force it in down the field. He's just about um, a yard away as we've come to the end of the first half. It'll be a kicking situation when we return. Bruins lead 10 to nothing. We start the second period here. The Bruins leading 10-0 over the Trojans. Shager is back to kick. And Curtis Conway is standing back at the Trojan 30-yard line. SC needs a big play. In fact, a series of big plays to get back in this one. Defense has been adequate, except for the 172-yard burst by Williams. Big rush, but Shager gets it away. Conway waits for the fair catch. The ball takes a Bruin bounce inside the 30 and rolls sideways at the 27-yard line. It'll be after a 40-yard kick, first and 10 for the Trojans at that point. Today's quarter notes are brought to you by Great Western's family of companies, $40 billion strong. Williams over 1,000 yards now with a big 72-yard touchdown run. Perez a 41-yard field goal. Dudum missed one for SC. Gray with his 10th interception. Each quarterback has thrown one, and the Bruins have a lead of 10 to nothing. Reggie Perry comes in to quarterback the Trojans, first down at the SC 27. Receiver strong to the right. Bruins show blitz, but don't. Perry back, hunts, going long down the far side for Curtis Conway. Gray was there. The ball was underthrown, and in fact, both of them were waiting to jump for it, and Gray got a little higher and tipped it away. 
I just made mention of the fact uh, to Paul McDonald during the timeout. I asked Paul, it looks like they really put Reggie Perry in some really inopportune spots throughout the course of the game. And I don't know if that falls under coaching philosophy or, or just maybe what they're trying to get out of Reggie Perry. I'll agree with you because there have been many third and uh, seven, third and eight calls this year, Tom Ramsey, where one receiver would be in the pass pattern, as Paul McDonald pointed out several times, and it's tough to pick up big third down yardage when one guy's running back there against four and five. Frank, first through opening, and carries it out to about the 34-yard line where Stacy Argo is there to wrap him up. But I pointed to uh, the out route that Gray almost got out in front of Conway. That, there it was. Later in the second quarter, they tried to get him on that, run the out, and didn't fool him. Didn't fool him. He read the play all the way. It was a nice one and uh, incomplete. Creighton, nice run. This is the thing that he's done. Get the extra yard for USC, and that's why he's in there right now. And again, we now come up to a third down at the Trojan 34-yard line, third and four. And we'll see what Perry and the coaching staff reach into the playbook for. Third and four has been a tough number. Third and eight even tougher. And now the Trojans, pretty undecided about it, going to have to call a timeout. 13.55 remaining here in the first half. The second timeout used by the Trojans, even though Conway came in supposedly with a play, and now they've had to take a timeout to go talk it over on the far side. John Matsko, who is the uh, offensive coordinator, pushes the offensive line and has the added responsibility of offensive coordinator trying to settle on something over there will get the Trojan drive underway. Uh, USC, 37% third down conversion all year. Not real good. And a lot of that, you point back to, you know, the youth, but mainly to that guy right there, Reggie Perry. He's got to make the plays on third down. Now, here's the question of the day. How much do they miss Todd Marinovich? Well, we, we talked all year about the youth on the team. We talked about, uh, you know, they had injuries. They've had a tough schedule. But the fact is, they don't have a veteran quarterback in there all year, and that's hurt them. And whether that guy was Todd Marinovich last year, who played well, or somebody else who was veteran, I think they definitely missed that. Well, let me tell you that uh, the most skilled p people on the field for the Trojans are receivers. That may answer your question, Tom Ramsey. Bill McDonald, what's happening down there? Well, Tom, time to talk a little Trojan legacy with one of the great quarterbacks of all time, Pat Hayden, and his ladies. Pat, favorite moment in the Crosstown Showdown for you? Well, I think my senior year, I thought it was, it was the last SCU-CLA game. Everything was on the line. The Rose Bowl, we won in the last quarter. That was my favorite moment, Bill. All right, after this play, we want to ask you one very important business question. We'll hold on for one second. Over the middle, pass caught by Curtis Conway, and he was leveled. What a hit by Henderson, and to the credit of the wide receiver, he made a great catch and hold. Let's go back to Bill. All right, thanks, Tom. Now, you are very actively involved in the new Coliseum renovation in the Coliseum Club. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we're really excited about it. I, th I think it's going to make this place a much more intimate place than Wallace college football in particular. And I think that's important because the fans are going to be closer to the, the field, the action. I think it's going to be a real home field advantage for USC and for the Raiders. So we're looking forward to it's going on, uh, according to schedule. All right, 10 nothing right now. He's got a little bit of a frown, <laughs> but the girls are optimistic. Back upstairs. Pitch to Creighton. Creighton turns the corner, needs a block. He's out of bounds in front of Larry Smith at the Bruin 41. Had he had just an extra yard or two on the sidelines, Creighton might have gone more than 19 yards. He has been an exciting football player as you watch him again. You got Bender kicking out, opening the way for Creighton. Last week, six of the runs that he had were for 10-plus yards. This is the thing, brings the big play a different element to the game for USC. At Tom Ramsey, guess who's over there? Number three. Is that some tough cornerback? <laughs> well, I tell you what, Carlton Gray, without a doubt, an awfully tough competitor. Boy, interceptions, touchdown saving tackles. Back Perry shovels it ahead. Nobody fooled at all, especially Argo. He was waiting right there. I'm surprised he didn't intercept that little shovel pass. Stacy Argo playing so well for the Bruin defense. He didn't play in the first few games of the year for the Bruins. But he's really come around. He's fifth in the team in tackles with 38 total. And right there puts a stop to Creighton. That's the best way to stop a good running back. Don't let him get going. Huh? <laughs> I tell you, coaches uh, love a guy who'll stay home and play his position. And Argo certainly was the epitome of that. At the 40-yard line, second and 10 for the Trojans. 10-0 Bruins lead. The pitch to Creighton on the sweep. Sidelines. Gets hit. Squirms ahead. Bringing him down was Henderson. Uh, carry will be to about the 36, a gain of maybe five, where it'll be third and five at that point. 27 carries a week ago, 185 yards, 
caught a touchdown pass, scored one on the ground, could have had another, dropped the ball right through his hands at the goal line. But Well, Trojan's coming out throwing and now trying to go back to the running game to create some balance and get UCLA off guard. Scott and Curtis Conway flanked wide to the left. Johnny Morton to the left side. Creighton alone setback. Perry back to throw, big rush, throws. Almost intercepted, should have been. I don't know what kind of a screen that was supposed to be, but Henderson had it go through his hands two or three times, and Perry is lucky that he's not on a stretcher with every big Bruin around him. I was going to say, Reggie Perry's an awfully tough player because he gets sandwiched between three guys right there, and Othello Henderson really has a chance to make the interception. Matt Warner <laughs> almost makes the play as well. Warner almost comes up with it. This was called the lookout screen, guys. <laughs> yeah, the lineman's saying, look out, here they come. That's right. Yeah, that's a beauty. Not the way you're supposed to execute it. Tell it to Reggie Perry. He's not <laughs> laughing back there. Boy, he looked up and it looked like the whole world was falling in on him. Now, way too soon before he wanted to throw the ball. And you got to hold them, got those guys out, the defensive lineman, for a counter two, and then let them go. Don't just let them go right away. So again, the Trojans, despite a fine run, a couple of them by Creighton, find themselves in a punting situation. Dale's averaging 40, his longest 48, and this one he gets away, trying to pooch it inside the 20. Fair catch is signaled for by La Chapelle, a 28-yard kick, and it's going to be at the 10-yard line. I would have thought La Chapelle, fair catch, fake little bounce in the end zone. Yeah, you would think, I, I really, I was surprised SC didn't go for it on fourth down, but, uh, you know, I guess La Chapelle right there deciding the best thing to do, of course, is make the fair catch. So the Bruins will have the ball on their 10-yard line. And we'll pause with 12.30 remaining here in the first half. No, we're not going to go away. First down for the Bruins at the 10-yard line. They lead 10 to nothing. off to Smith and he struggles ahead over the 15 to about the 16 yard line five yard pickup it'll be second down and a short five out of the 15 Merle and Williams were there to make the stop 10 to nothing UCLA on top 72 yard run by Kevin Williams the big blow and a 41 yard field goal by Perez oh my Trojans uh Pins jumped over the line of scrimmage. If he were not drawn off, why, then it'll be encroachment and the ball will come out for a first down at the 20. Well, right there, the Bruins utilizing their on-the-line freeze call. Maddox just Dead goes ball up. encroachment by the defense. Five yards, still second down. Maddox goes up to the line of scrimmage without a play call, goes through his cadence. No one's going to move on the UCLA side right there. Hens jumping, and if no one does jump, Maddox will go ahead, he'll come to a play, check it off the line of scrimmage, and they'll get the one. But right there, nice nice play by Tommy Maddox. I mistakenly identified the man as Hens. It was Thomas Holland who came across the line of scrimmage. And I can't believe that it wasn't a first down, but it's going to be second just inches at the 20. And Maddox just keeps it and squirms ahead for the first down. It'll be first and 10 now for the Bruins at about the... 22 yard line of UCLA. I'm sorry, I don't understand that play call. I mean, it's second, second and an inch. inch. Yeah. Why don't you take a chance and throw the ball and get some yards down the field? It's ironic you say that. I was just going to turn to Paul McDonald and say, now wouldn't that be a great time to open up something and throw the ball because you still have a third down and an inch? Exactly. And you're going to get that with the quarterback sneak. So they wasted a play. Well, they've still got the first down, but they did seem to be in two or three down operating territory, didn't they? Maddox up under center. 10-0, Bruins lead, Maddox back to throw, quick look out, the bait caught by Daly is tied in, and he's down at the Bruin 29-yard line, short of the first down, will bring up second down at about four, Salmon was over defensively along with Henry and uh, Gideon Merle, make it second down at about four out at the 29. Really, you've got a couple of downs to work with there with second and merely inches, don't you? Huh? Yeah, I'm really surprised by the call. It's a, a great time to at least take a shot deep if you're going to any time during the first half. Ten to nothing. Bruins lead with 11 minutes to go in the first half. Maddox changing things up, hand signals to his receiver. Settles back under the center. Line is set. And he's back to throw. Has some time. Gets rushed. Throws it. Complete. Salmon makes the stop. 
as the uh, ball carrier wrestles Salmon, LaChapelle, and others out to the 44. 15 yards and a first and 10 UCLA. And I tell you, Sean LaChapelle, not only has he got great hands, but he takes a lot of attention to get down on the ground. Well, let's see right that time with an eight-man front. So LaChapelle's working one-on-one -on -one with the free safety Salmon. You're going to see how fiscal LaChapelle is. He's not, it takes a few guys to bring him down right there, carrying Salmon for a few extra yards. First down, Bruins at their 44-yard line. And nothing UCLA on top. Little delay, handoff, visit is Williams, and he spurns it from the 45 to the 46. There's a lot going on down there on the field. Uh, Tom and I used to play, Tom Kelly. You didn't have to motion and go to the audible. Then you have to tell your running back to block. You got to block that guy. It took about 10, 15 seconds for Tommy Maddox to get everything organized, right? I mean, we just line up and go, right? Well, wait a minute, Tom Ramsey. Doesn't he do that a lot, though? Does the audibleizer change up at the line of scrimmage? He does call quite a, quite a few plays at the line of scrimmage. They really believe Tommy Maddox works best at the line of scrimmage and not in the huddle. High formation, the Bruins with almost 100 yards more on offense than I see. It's like Maddox is changing up right now from the center. Second down, there's a whistle. We may have a delay of game. I think that was going to be my next to thought. He does run the clock down a bit uh, often, doesn't he? Yeah, a little too much checking off that time, but they really believe Maddox. Dead ball, delay of game against the offense. The down still remains two. The best play called, and I know Paul McDonald will second me on this, you can't get to a possibly a better play call by the guy right underneath the center. He can see what the defense is. He can anticipate the coverage, and they feel Tommy Maddox is light years ahead in this offense, and he really has made a lot of admirable calls throughout the year, and even last year. So, really, he has a lot of freedom up there at the line of scrimmage. Second down and 13 for the Bruins, and the ball comes back to the UCLA 41. They lead 10 to nothing. We've got 940 to go. First half here. and dropped almost immediately coming up to make the tackle was uh, Brian Williams. He wasn't fooled a bit. Williams and Kevin Williams meeting just about the time they tried to get that screen operative. You don't ideally want to run a screen pass versus man-to-man -man coverage because if the linebacker is right on your man, he'll nail him just like Williams on that particular play nailed. He's fast, too. He's about 4-5 in the 40, so he can run with Kevin. Going to bring up third and 17 now. The ball on the Bruin 37-yard line. Maddox with the back split up under center. As he shows a nine-man line as they're up on the line covering the wide receivers, La Chapelle included. Maddox to throw. Feeling some pressure. Rolls to his right. Looking, throws. Passes caught. Going to be at the 49-yard line. Great catch by Michael Moore. Big debate there. Was he in or out of bounds? But the official on the play says fair catch. He's going to bring up a fourth down and about four. And the Bruins will send a Shaker in to kick it away. Woo. Right there, Michael Moore really making a fine catch along the sideline. Great camera work, keeping the one foot down, but just short of the first down. They ever run a fake uh, punt, Tommy, this year? No, they haven't, but uh, there's still time left in this season. There we go. There it is, and there's the fake punt, and carrying the ball is Toy, and he runs for the first down. Tom Kelly, you were all over that one. You did that once before this year, I think. At least once, uh, maybe twice. Tom Kelly, the wizard, does a little extra research on the well, side. I think he might have peeked over the fence this week at uh, one of the Bruin practices. How many games has he seen, though, uh, UCLA games all year? This is it, and let me tell you, if I can sit 200 yards away and anticipate that, leading 10 to nothing with four yards to go, then somebody else ought to be able to as well. 13 yards on the pickup. It's a perfect spot for it. But, Tom, you've seen, what, 31 of these games now? Yeah, this is number 32, so... The ball is at the Trojan 36-yard line for the Bruins, a first and 10. They started this drive on their own 10-yard line. They lead 10 to nothing and are marching up the field. Into the secondary to the 30, Davis this time brought down at the Trojan 29-yard line. Tackle made by Mike Salmon. Let me ask Paul McDonald the question here. Anytime, if, if the Bruins go ahead and go in to score on this drive, what does a 90-yard drive do to that Trojan defense? Oh, the, the youth there and the problems they've had all year long, it really demoralizes them. 
And I think uh, the fact that the offense hasn't done much either has really hurt them. And they need to get the offense to score some points to get them aroused, to get them excited to play good football. Second down on the 29. The Bruins are averaging 9.7 yards a carry for a play. Knocked out of bounds is Williams as he comes to this near side. Down very close to the 20. And it'll be a first down. UCLA first and 10 on the Trojan 20-yard line. Well, once again, Kevin Williams taking the ball. He's going to be a workhorse today. And you see it right there, squaring his shoulders up the field, turning up. Once again, he and Sam have been meet, meet, meeting an awful lot today. He, of course, is, um, I think, over 1,100 yards now quite easily. as a 72-yard touchdown run. He's every bit as good as we expected. Again, I asked the question that took everybody in Westwood so long to realize this kid should be the table back. Out of the shotgun. Maddox to the sideline. Caught there by Adams and knocked out of bounds at the 11. Ryan Adams, who has 11 catches coming into the game and a touchdown, out of Bakersfield. That's so easy to do. It's so easy. You got a blitzed look. Just throw a quick out. The guy's wide open. The corner's way off him. It's an easy completion. You almost got a first down. Jason Oliver there to make the stop. Ball comes in and is marked just inside the uh, call at the 11. That'll make it second down and uh, inches. down trying to carry but unable to get much was Williams who was tripped up by Brian Williams quick freshman linebacker out of Dallas Texas who has been one of the true pleasant surprises for the Trojans defensively this year he's given a good account of himself every time we've seen him that brings up third down now and inches to go at the 11 play action pass time right here Michael Moore wide to the far left and Calvin Holmes is out fronting him one on one Smith. The give to Kevin Williams. He's inside, outside, first down, headed for the end zone. Down he goes. A touchdown saving tackle across the way by Kelvin Holmes, who just did get enough of Kevin Williams to upset him at the three yard line, but it'll be first and goal. Boy, it really is a great tackle by Holmes in the open field. Kevin Williams just starting to gather his speed right here. You're going to see he makes a quick little dip, and then he's trying to get to the flag, and Calvin Holmes just comes up and makes a sure tackle. Fine play by number 21. Shows you where Kevin Williams fits in the Bruins scheme of things. Only the sixth rusher in UCLA's great football history to go for 1,000 yards or over in a season. As a backup. Yes, and uh, here he is now. Probably I'm the sure. first as a backup, right, Tom? Could very well be. yards, I would imagine. Not quite, all right. 1,091. High formation. First and goal at the Trojan three. Here's Williams. Trying to turn the corner. Jason Oliver would not let him do so. They pile him up for no gain. It'll be second and goal at the Trojan three. I'm not sure I understand that one. Let Williams run back into the short side of the field. Maybe the Trojans overload it to the wide side. They're hoping Kevin can break back into the, maybe behind Kevin Smith's block right there. He looked like he could have taken it up inside. Oliver made a good attempt on the force there. Forced the play inside. That's what he's got to do. But you're right, on the short side, there's not as much yardage there to work with. Second down and goal. The ball is marked at the two yard line. going to throw, comes out in the flat, La Chappelle, flag will be called on Kevin, uh, Calvin Holmes, because he never turned around to look where the ball was. Had he turned around, there would have been no flag, but he was looking right into the face mask of La Chappelle, and that's going to be half the distance to the goal line, and that'll be a first down on about the one. Well, that's the jump ball we were talking about earlier. You just throw one up, it's just a quick fade route, have a jump ball at your guy that's 6'4", La Chappelle, go up and get it. Yeah, Tommy Maddox just throwing a quick fade there. Pass interference, defense. Since the foul was inside the three-yard line, it's half the distance, first down. Well, he did turn and look around, but he pushed La Chapelle first right there and then turned around. First and goal at the one. The Bruins started this drive back on their 10-yard line. 
when we questioned aloud La Chapelle's non-fair catch call, and he picked the ball off and stood there at the 10. Five minutes remain here in this third period. Uh, excuse me, in this first half. Fifteenth play of this drive. Maddox shifts him into the I formation. Smith, Williams the tailback. Smith dives, but Smith dove too soon. In fact, he was kind of um, stretched out in the horizontal before. Huh? Uh, subterranean. <laughs> <laughs> looks like he was going to torpedo in, I think, underneath, but it uh, looks like he lost his footing. Kevin Smith, by 6'4", 260. Woo! I'd love to bring that guy down. <laughs> wow! At any rate, he's coming out for a conference on the sidelines, I would assume. <laughs> Bruins lead 10 to nothing and looking to pad their advantage. Maddox looks right into the Trojan end zone. Second and goal. Into the end zone. Did he score? Apparently not. That was Boy Toy who tried an up and over the top and came up empty apparently because there are no arms in the air. Well, they tried under. They tried <laughs> over. And now they're trying. I bet they go through them, right? I don't know. Look at it again. See if our camera picks up the goal line and toy up in the air. Oh, yes, good call. He didn't get there, gentlemen, did the he? The ball did not cross the goal line. <laughs> and that's what you got to have, a great defense by the Trojans. Well, let's see. Under, over, this time slip it wide, go outside or something. Now you're the quarterback. What would you call it? Come on, Ramsey. I believe, I believe number eight's going to take it himself right here. He may be disenchanted with the other guys in the backfield. Third and goal. He gave it to Toy again. There is such a pileup of humanity. SC acts as though they've recovered a fumble. Now the Bruins are saying touchdown. I don't agree that the referee should be standing around Listen, not I'll, making yeah, a call. That's ridiculous. Yeah, they're, they're trying to huddle and decide what to do here with all these screaming that's, players. Yeah. Get up, gotta get away from them and talk about it. But well, that's, I mean, anything they, they give you now is going to be an after-the-fact thing. And, uh, you know, I mean, this play's gone on now. 10, 15 seconds since it was over. Now they're going to guess about where the ball is. <laughs> Boy, did, did, did anybody see that in there? Yeah. Did you see a ball come out? No. Referee's saying to the umpire, what do you got? So I'm, I'm just holding the ball. How about the headlinesman? What do you got? Well, listen, I got a lot of you. Hey, anybody got a coin? <laughs> Boy. Come on, fellas, give us a decision. Uh, Larry Smith would like to know, and I'm sure Terry Donahue would like to know. Uh, it'd be a big play for the Trojans that they could hold him here. A what do you think, Terry? Play. Terry's got that same look. Of, oh, is wow. that something now to call a touchdown now? Oh, boy. That's unbelievable. And look at Larry Smith. Does that look at his face tell you what he thinks? Cannot believe it. What's all well, the discussion about? To believe. You know, the ball was fumbled in the field of play, recovered in the end zone for a touchdown by UCLA. Now, isn't that strange? The Trojans came up saying they had the football, and the call is now fumbled in the field of play into the end zone, recovered by UCLA. I tell you, a long time convincing USC of that. Wow, well, I'm not sure who we credit the touchdown to here, but we're going we're gonna to have a nice chance here. Maury toys the ball carrier. We'll see if we can see the ball pop out. Can't see it. No, in fact, he was in the end zone, and the ball was back in the field of play. Somebody kick it in, then I wonder? Well, it's a moot point because the guys in the striped shirts have decreed touchdown. But it has not been an easy year for the Zebras and Larry Smith. He's had some problems. Uh, and, of course, uh, teams that don't play well don't get many breaks. And one thing seems to feed on another. The crowd can't quite believe the touchdown, but it's going to be nonetheless. 17-play drive and 90 yards. I'm not really sure how you explain that one to the head coach. I know they're trying over there, but he's not buying it. No, no he's not going for no, that No, you one. see, all they're doing is compounding a felony, so to speak. Why go and explain something to him that the man is not going to believe, and you didn't really believe it yourself because it took you half a minute to decide? Yeah, I may want to ask Paul this question. You always see, during a goal line stand, big, huge pileups, and they're letting the sideline referees make the call. The referee should be the one making the call. He should be right up behind this fullback and seeing where the ball right. crosses the goal He's line. He's got to get in there and, and, and unpile them and find out. There's the ball. It's coming out. Okay, it's out. And it's rolling. 
right around the goal line. You still, still don't see not it. in the end zone, is it? No. You don't see the ball. Oh, we got to let that tape run longer. We got to have some more tape. Find That's out where amazing. the ball ended up. That's amazing. Our conversation is moot at best, though, because it's already been called six. And now we'll see about the extra point. Perez already has a field goal. 252 remaining. The PAT was good. 17 to nothing. The Bruins lead. 252 remaining in the first half. And we'll be back with more right after this. Today's game is brought to you by your Toyota dealers and their quality line of cars and trucks. By Great Western's family of companies, $40 billion strong. And by Target. Happy Thanksgiving from Target's family to yours. 17 to nothing in favor of the Bruins. They had a drive of 90 yards in 17 plays. And let me tell you, six of the 17 plays came from the two-yard line. And then, of course, there was one play of about, oh, maybe a foot and a half and 30 seconds of indecision. And finally, the arms in the air. 17 nothing in favor of UCLA. And Sandifer is there to kick it off for the Bruins. I tell you, some balanced uh, drive, and we mentioned it in the opening remarks, Tom Ramsey, 50 yards rushing uh, and uh, 50 yards passing, 40 yards on the ground. The kickoff is short, taken at the 30, out to about the 32-yard line by Jason Ewell. So the Bru uh, Bruins really put together a very complete offensive package behind Maddox and, of course, the fine running of uh, Kevin Williams. Yeah, they really did. It's really a nice mix. Coach Homer Smith calling some plays. I'm sure Maddox checking off the line of scrimmage on some of those. 17 to nothing, 248 remaining in the half. Trojans need some big moments. We'll be back right after this. Airship Columbia looking down in the city of the Angels, who's wearing a very pretty face today. There she is, high above the Coliseum. Joel Chamberlain at the controls. The cameraman there is Richard Markle. 17 to nothing in favor of UCLA. SC takes over at its own 33-yard line. Reggie Perry at quarterback. And off to Creighton. Makes a couple of guys miss and spins his way out to the 40. Some people say he looks like Marcus, and others say he looks a little bit like O.J. with some of his moves. Walker made the tackle. Bill McDonald on the sidelines. What about that fumble that wasn't a fumble, or what was it, Bill? Tom, what I asked the headlinesman was, who got the ball? And the headlinesman said it was Brian Allen coming out of that, uh, coming out of that pile. So give the fumble recovery and the touchdown to Brian Allen. Then also, Travis Collier out of the game, sprained left knee. Back to you. Perry throws, ball tipped away by Argo at the last second. Pass intended for Wallace, and Argo just stuck out a hand and knocked it away. So Brian Allen gets credit for the fumble recovery in the end zone. Perry's 4-14 now, 34 yards. I thought Bill McDonald, with his investigative reporting, would be down in that pile along with all those referees, but... Bill didn't quite jump in there. <laughs> no, he's wearing his new suit today, uh, Tom. He didn't want to get in there and get it must up. It's going to be third down for the Trojans. About three yards to go, just shy of their 40. Perry in a catch-up mode. Throws a pass that's complete for the first down. Still on his feet at midfield is Wallace. 45-40. Wallace 35-30 and out of bounds at the Bruin 30-yard line. First and 10 at that point. And Argo brought him down 30 yards on the pass and run. And now for about the third time in this ball game, SC's offense finds themselves in a position to put some points on the board, and all of it rests on the shoulders of number 16. Well, we've said USC has excellent receivers. You get the ball to a guy like Larry Wallace, who's big, strong, and can run, and these things can happen. He can break some tackles and get some yards up the field. This is what USC has not done all year. they got to try and continue to do that, get the ball to the speed guys. Conway and Wallace are playing wide to the left. Perry all alone, in trouble. Down he goes. That was a broken play. Down he goes at the 32. He turned, and there were nothing but white jersey Bruins looking for him there. That I don't know who he's supposed to give the ball to or where that play was designated to go, but it, uh, it died at the 32. It's a very lonely feeling when you go back there to hand out to somebody and nobody is there. Obviously, a miscommunication. Somebody went the wrong way. Minute and a half to go in the half. Perry out of the shotgun to throw. Fires it in the flat pass 
pass is complete at the 21-yard line, caught by Conway, who kind of cradled it and fell to the ground. Had he stayed on his feet, he might have been toward the end zone. Now they get a market at the 21, and it's going to be third down and about a yard to go. And the clock continues to run with a minute 16, a minute 14. SC with one timeout left, trailing 17 to nothing. Would feel a lot better about themselves if they were able to go into the dressing room at halftime with some scores or a score. Perry swings it down to the 14-yard line for a first down with a minute one remaining, and Henderson made the stop. So you want to try and salvage that one timeout if you need it. You don't need to call it now. You've got time, but you've got to get the play called. you got to get everyone on the same page, get it called as soon as possible so you don't waste any time. Backs are split in the pro set. Conway wide to the left. Perry at the Bruin 14. Lobs it for the end zone for Conway. Catches it. Touchdown, USC. Caught it over Dion Lambert. Looks like he gave Dion a little fake over there, guys. A little stop and go on a 13-yard reception. Well, Conway knew where the ball was, and Lambert didn't. And that's why Conway came up with a great touchdown catch to go up and over Lambert. Can I tell you, you two quarterbacks will appreciate this. What a tough year it's been for Perry. Only his second touchdown toss of the year. It's been a dry spell, but this is just a fade route, a jump ball, and Lambert, the cornerback covering Conway, didn't see the ball, couldn't find it. Conway came up with a nice play. Good him to try the extra point. It's down, it's up, and it's good. 17 to 7, the Bruins lead. That drive, 67 yards. We'll be back to see about the final 46 seconds of the first half. Right up to this. Seventeen to seven, the Bruins lead. I told you it was Perry's second touchdown toss. It is the first touchdown catch of his career for Curtis Conway. L.A. Kings will play host to the Toronto Maple Leafs Tuesday night. The Great Western Forum catch all the action live at 7:30, only on Prime Ticket. So the Trojans to kick it off. J.J. Dudem to hit it. Davis and Richardson are the twin deep men for UCLA. Ball is hit short. Bearcats signaled for it about the 17-yard line. That was uh, signaled for and taken as you look at Curtis Conway. And uh, short kick. That was uh, Brian Ty who pulled that in. At halftime, we'll go back to press box at our prime ticket studios and get you scores and highlights. Glenn Walker will be there to bring you up to date on other games around the country, and there have been some great traditionals today. Michigan en route to the Rose Bowl to play Wisconsin just hammered Ohio State. John Cooper got a contract extension before the game, which might have been a very smart <laughs> <laughs> Market at the 18-yard line. Maddox turns, hands off, on the sweep to the right side. Trying to turn the corner is Davis. Likes his way out over the 25 to about the 26-yard line. Gain of about eight. Davis is pretty quick, too. Yes, he is. Second down and two. Davis is a, a sophomore out of Houston, 5'9", 175-pounder. Are you surprised uh, the Bruins not trying to get some more before halftime? Um, well, I, I think really with the addition of Ricky Davis, they really don't lose a whole lot, but... Uh, uh, it's, it's hard to say. I think they're just happy with the lead right yeah. now. They're willing to go in and talk about it some more. 77 yeah. is not too bad. No, 17 to 7, the Bruins lead, and they're content to let the clock run out as the near capacity crowd looks on at this annual crosstown get together. Bruins scoring first and a little more often. All right, 17 to 7 here at the Coliseum as the Bruins are on top by 10. Let's go to Glenn Walker and our Saturday report on football. Welcome back to the Coliseum here in Los Angeles where the Bruins lead the Trojans 17 to 7. Our halftime scoreboard brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Remember what fares were like before Southwest Airlines? 17 to 7, the Bruins, and one of the big plays for Kevin Williams, a 72-yard scamper, all part of an afternoon so far of 133 yards. One play, 72 yards. Running the option, Tom Ramsey, and did they run it beautifully? Well, Tommy Maddox taking the ball down the line of scrimmage, pressuring the defensive end, and flipping the ball out to number 20, Kevin Williams, who just utilizes his speed right here and outruns the Trojan defense. 
72 yards en route to an afternoon of 133. Second play, this one the controversial one, 90 yards in 17 plays. And the sixth play from inside the two-yard line found the reserve tight end, Brian Allen, recovering a fumble. Big time decision by the officials, the ball rolling around in there. Watch Allen a moment later now. Number 86 will just reach in, pick up the ball, and say it's his. Well, See? There you are. Really a great play. Maury Toy, the one that fumbled. Brian Allen, the opportune one, coming out with the ball. After the Trojans had fallen behind 17 to nothing, seven plays, a 67-yard drive, and a 13-yard pass from Reggie Perry, his second of the year, to Conway, his first-ever touchdown reception. This is just a jump ball, and Lambert actually has him covered very, fairly well, but he, he throws it short behind him, and Conway, Kenny comes up with it. Kenny Stable used to do this all the time, throw it short, he ends up coming with the football. The statistics are right in the hands of the Bruins, 12 first downs to six, rushing 172 to 47, passing 109 to 88, Total yardage, 281 to 135. Each quarterback has been intercepted once. 39 plays for the Bruins, 28 for the Trojans. And UCLA has had the ball 20 minutes as compared with barely 9.59 for the Trojans. Well, welcome back to the Coliseum. I'm Tom Kelly. You think this isn't togetherness? Tom <laughs> Ramsey here on my right and Paul McDonald on my left. Your Bruins have looked pretty good. They had a great 90-yard drive where Maddox had it mixed up exactly, 50 and 40. They really handled the ball well. Well, it really was a nice drive. 90 yards is definitely the way to go if you're going to drive and, and score a touchdown, although the defense really has to hold this coming second half. It looks like Williams is capable of breaking one every time he handled the ball, doesn't he? Yeah, he really does. He has such great speed at any time during the game he can go. There was one brief moment there, Perry and uh, Conway on a nice 67-yard drive, and Creighton has won the ball well for the Trojans. Yeah, he really has. And that touchdown at the end of the half, I think, is really going to help USC in the second half. They needed that momentum, but the bottom line is they haven't controlled the line of scrimmage, as evidenced by all the yards that they've given up on defense and the lack of yards running the ball on offense. A touchdown certainly made it a very more pleasant halftime locker room for the Trojans than they might have expected. Bill McDonald is down on the sidelines. We'll get a comment from Bill about this first half of play. Bill, if you will, please. All right, Tom, one more thing about that controversial, if it is controversial, touchdown by Brian Allen. What the referees were conferring about is whether or not the whistle blew or not. Talk to uh, umpire uh, Wolf, umpire Wolf, Walt Wolf, that's his name, I'll remember it. And he said that was what the problem was. Also, for SC's defense, what is so, so important in the second half is to stop the running game. Thus, the inside linebackers are going to be the key for USC if they're going to get back into this ball game, Gentlemen, I'll remember names one of these days. Let's go back to the triumvirate up in the booth. All right, thank you, Bill. There's the Bruins coming out of the tunnel, getting ready to start the second half. The Trojans coming out right behind them. 17-7 in favor of the Bruins. Second half, UCLA will have the ball first. First, we'll pause for this message. Here. Bruins will have the ball to start the second half. They're huddling down below 17 to 7. They have a 10 point advantage here at the intermission and they've dominated this first half of play. I have a trivia question for you. Brought to you by Isuzu. The Isuzu trivia quiz is who are the only four running backs to rush for more than 200 yards in the SC UCLA series? I can tell you it wasn't Ramsey and McDonald. Maybe a minus 200. That, that, gives, that gives you a bit of an edge. We'll tell you a bit later on. You can probably, you can probably guess all four of them. I can give you a clue. Three of them won Heisman trophies. Larry Smith, looking on. His team down 17 to seven. Smith has been in this position, as far as he's concerned, far too many times this year down at halftime forced to play catch up and uh, the Trojans will kick off to UCLA to start the third period Richardson is deep along with Davis Newton hits it high and deep Davis all the way back to the one yard line. Ten sidelines. Ball is loose, diving for it. SC has recovered. Ball popped up into the air. The Trojans will have it at the Bruin 19 yard line. And what a fortuitous break for the Trojans.
Trojans, Junior Moy was the guy who was very alert. As the ball popped loose, he just gobbled it up. Well, Paul Richardson's the one who takes the kickoff. You're going to see it just stripped right out of his hands, and Moy just making a great play, jumping over the top. This is the kind of thing that USC needed to open the second half. Play opportunistic football. Get a turnover. Change that momentum. This carries over from the first half. They scored that touchdown, and now they might be able to take another one in. Never have a better chance to get some more points on the board. First down at the 19. The pitch to Creighton. Creighton will get it to about the 16-yard line, maybe the 15 before he's inundated. Malone was one of the first of the Bruin defenders to hit him. Creighton is deceptively big. When you look at him, first of all, you don't realize that He's the biggest of the running backs. In that regard, he's about the size of O.J. Simpson and Marcus Allen, and upon occasions looks like the two of them, which is great praise indeed, because they're two of the greatest uh, runners this game has ever seen, or any game. Wide to the left is Travis Hanna. Second down at the 16-yard line, and about seven. Harry up under center. Gives to his fullback Bender, who plows straight ahead over the right side to about the 12-yard line. We'll bring up third down and about three. Clyde Kelly, they say, leading the defensive unit for UCLA and Chalinski. Well, you got to believe this might be four-down territory here, not take a chance on a field goal, so they got two downs to get a first. They marked it at the 13-yard line, gentlemen. I'm Tom Kelly, along with Tom Ramsey and Paul McDonald. Bruins lead 17 to 7. Third period just underway, and SC with the golden opportunity. Claw their way back into this ball game. Creighton straight ahead. We'll see where they mark it. Short of the first down at the 11, which brings up fourth and two at the 11. Now then, you're going to go for three. Here comes Dudem. Well, given his record, you got to wonder why they're doing this. The, the lack of productivity of the SC offense all year long. They're down there close. Why not go for the touchdown? Well, I've got to agree, Paul. This is, I think this is a, a, a terrible offensive display by the Trojans if they can't pick up a first down, even though that is very tough territory, red territory. 28-yard try by Dudem. He kicks it, and it's no good. Waste not, want not. It's been that kind of a year for Coach Smith. He looks on as the defense and the kicking unit gets the ball on the Trojan 19. They get no further downfield than the 11. UCLA will take over at the 20. Still leading 17 to 7. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> rolling back as if to throw was hit and nailed for a loss by Stefan Pace. And that's going to take it back from the 20-yard line where UCLA had a first and 10. Back to the 14-yard line, it'll be second and 16. Here's another look at it. You can see Pace coming in on a blitz. Maddox doing a toe dance, and down he went. That's the thing that USC has to do is pressure Tommy Maddox, but they let a, a golden opportunity get away on the turnover on the kickoff. Indeed they did. And all they managed to gain by trying for the missed field goal was something like they lost nine yards on the turnover pass Maddox and he's going for all of it down the far sidelines incomplete what a battle across the way back there defensively as Richardson was the intended receiver was Calvin Holmes who has one interception already and is making this truly a bowl game for Calvin he's been burned a couple of times this season well more than a couple really but he's been playing beautifully here today he really has. He shows his speed on that play, but his awareness for where the ball is is able to make a great play to make the incomplete pass. Knock it down. Third and 16 at the Bruin 14-yard line. Trojan show blitz. Maddox with a long count. Back to pass. Coming to the sideline. Pass is complete. The last Chappelle drops short of the first down at the 26-yard line. Jason Oliver and Stephen Pace were there to cover the talented Bruin receiver. Well, gentlemen, I hate to harp on it, but when you've got a fourth down and about two yards to go, well, here's another look at LaChapelle. 
Yeah, going back, La Chapelle right there making a fine play, but going back to your point, Tom Kelly, you have a, a fourth and short SC offense really, really wasting an opportunity. I mean, if you miss it, the Bruins are going to get the yeah. ball at their 10, perhaps, huh? Right. Okay. With a field goal kicker who's a walk-on and hasn't been able to produce. No fair catch, but Conway may have wished he had as he's dropped on the 41-yard line. A 35-yard kick and a two-yard return. The man who kicked it was Shager. All right, 11.21 to go in the third period. 17 to 7 UCLA. We'll be back. Today's game is brought to you by Lexus, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. By Southwest Airlines. Remember what fares were like before Southwest Airlines? And by Coors Light, the silver bullet is the right beer now. Larry Smith and his team break the huddle across the way. They'll have nice field position at their own 41-yard line. Not nicer than down at the Bruin 19, though. From which they failed to convert a three-point try. So it's 17-7. There's Stacy Argo looking right on the face mask of big number 65 for the Trojans. That's Joel Christman, one of the young linemen. SC has only two seniors on offense on the offensive line. Perry takes the snap, pitching to Creighton on the sweep to the right. It's a block, turns the corner, turns it on, and he's going to be driven out of bounds at about the Bruin 48-yard line. Good block by Bender, the fullback. Creighton really has some great speed. Oh, he does. It's interesting. It's a little bit deceiving. He doesn't have the great stride length like Kevin Williams, but he does get around the corner awfully quick. He, and he had to use his speed there. He had a good kick out block by Bender, but then all the rest of it was speed. They have marked the ball just inside the 50, and they're looking at the chains across the way. And they're going to stop now and measure for a first down, I believe. That's what the signal is. You know who he reminds me of, Tom Kelly, is Dwight Ford. Yes, I can remember Sudden, sudden Ford. Yes, indeed. Don't Dwight you think? Yeah. He went 94 yards once from yeah. one of the longest yeah. touchdowns in SC history. Yes, yeah. Might have been in the Blue Bonnet Bowl back right. in 77. Uh, Could have been. First down for the Trojans. First and 10, and the ball is at the Bruin, call it the 49-yard line. 54 yards and eight carries. Thank you, Dennis Benishian. That's the latest statistic on Estrus Creighton. My friend Bob Burt, who coaches Cal State Northridge, told me prior to the start of the season that uh, Trojan football fans would like this kid Creighton if they ever gave him the football, and he has proved to be a prophet, at least in the last two football games when Creighton has had an opportunity to play. First down for SC. Ball inside the Bruin half of the 50. There's a quick snap to Rodney Pete. Didn't fool anybody. The line, excuse me, Rodney Pete. Reggie Perry. The line did not move. Just the center, Gibson and Perry. That's SC's version of the fumble ruski, I guess, Paul. Or the or the freeze play that UCLA ran so effectively. <laughs> Nobody moves. UCLA jumps off sides, I, I guess. Hard to tell there, but uh, they only got a couple. They snapped the ball soon, and then, you know, they had a blitz look there. Maybe Reggie was trying to go to an audible play, and the play got uh, fouled up. At any rate, the ball is at the Bruin 46, second and seven. Play action, back to throw, pass complete at the Bruin 35, caught by Johnny Morton. His second reception of the afternoon, 11 yards and a first down. Henderson was there to make the start. That's a fine catch by Johnny Morton. Going one way, the ball's thrown behind him. The toughest catch in football to make. And he uh, pulls it off. Nice play by Perry to come off to a secondary receiver. Well, UCLA defensive coordinator Bob Field worried about this particular play, the misdirection or the bootleg. And you see Perry, he, I believe he's a little bit more adept running outside of the pocket than standing in the pocket to throw. First down, the ball at the Bruin, 35-17-7, UCLA on top. Dale back is great. Perry drop it, gets a rush, throws it down the middle. He's got his man at the goal line, into the end zone. No, at the one, Wallace, a diving catch, and he stumbled and fell at the one, 34 yards. He's a, about six inches short. Lambert was there, beaten on the play, but it'll be first and goal for SC, just inside the one-yard line. UCLA with eight men on the line of scrimmage showing a blitz look. No free safety in the middle. Reggie Perry audibilizes and throws one under pressure. Perfect throw to Larry Wallace. Perfect throw. That's where you want to lead the post, away from the defender. 
So it'll be first and goal, inches from the goal line for USC, trying to climb back into this one, and Perry takes it straight ahead. I think I've been, I've seen, I've seen this movie before. <laughs> they want me down at the other end of the field with this, drive toward the goal line, and nobody in a striped shirt does anything except runs together. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I just, I really believe the, uh, the goal line play, you're going to see Reggie Perry, Stacy Argo comes on a blitz right up the middle on touch, but Perry, like Paul McDonald said, just laying the ball out in front of Wallace, really putting it right where it had to be. Not a bad catch either, Tom. Out of the game goes Deion Struther, and coming into the ball game is a Creighton. Second and inches. goes over the top and scores this time over the top for the touchdown and quite suddenly with a lot of time left 850 in the third period SC's back in this football game gentlemen well they really are they've had the momentum from the touchdown at the end of the first half got the fumble did not convert that but they have driven the ball here in the second half and moved it very nicely Here's another look at it. This climax is a 58-yard drive that took six plays. SC has gone 67 yards and now 58 yards. Missed another golden opportunity moments ago. We'll see about Dudem in the try for the PAT. Down, he hits it. Up, it's good. 17 to 14 with 8.50 remaining in the third period. Got ourselves a football game. We'll be right back. Our thanks to the Goodyear Blimp Airship Columbia, brought to us by the Goodyear Tires and the local Goodyear retailers. Joel Chamberlain is at the controls, and Richard Markle is the cameraman, giving us some beautiful shots of the City of the Angels. We've got Richardson and Davis as the twin deep men awaiting the kickoff by Duda. And all of a sudden, I would think a partisan crowd of Trojan fans have come alive here as SC has battled back to trail 17 to 14. Far side, kick taken by one of the x men who takes it over the 25, up to about the 26, and that would be Brian Ty. Ty is the man who brings it back, and Oliver's there to make the tackle. By that time, he didn't fair catch it, right? No, he didn't. He did before, though. Yeah. I really don't think UCLA wants a linebacker returning their kickoffs, no. but Brian Ty seems to have been the man on a couple times yeah. tonight. I think that's as far as Dudem could kick it off the, uh, you know, the kickoff. <laughs> That's Tom Ramsey and Paul McDonald, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tom Kelly. Bill McDonald's on the sidelines. UCLA leading 17-14. Maddox takes over at his own 27-yard line. Out of the shotgun. Now with protection, back to throw, dumps it off. Complete behind the line at the 25-30, 35-yard line. Maury Toy, fullback, takes it out to the 35. A nice gain. Bill McDonald on the sidelines. A comment, please. Tom, that time a little dump off to Maury Toy, but what SC is doing well, their cornerbacks are playing the UCLA wideouts extremely close, bump and run. Rick Neuheisel, UCLA receivers coach, adamant, adamant about his guys moving the corners outside, then beating them inside. Let's see if they can do it on this drive. Out of the shotgun, second down at the 35 for Tom Maddox. Hands off on the delay, gives it to Kevin Williams, who's over the 35, maybe the 36, not quite to the 37. In fact, not quite to the 36, so it's going to be third down and call it one for the Bruins. Matt Willig, one of the few seniors on this USC team, made the stop. Out of the game comes Moore, and uh, Richardson checks in at a flanker spot for UCLA. 7.45 remaining, third period. 17-14 UCLA. Third down time for Tom Maddox. Third and about two at his own 35. Looking with time, Chase running out of the pocket, throws it on the run, pass is complete at the 41-yard line, and it'll be good for the first down. Maddox hitting Adams, and the Bruins will have a first down. Well, Adams hasn't been used a lot on the entire year, but he's had a hamstring problem right there. Reggie Perry, who scored the last touchdown there for the Trojans, but Tommy Max doing a fine job at that, being flushed out of the pocket and finding Adams for the first down. First and 10 of the 40 for the Bruins. Runs right into one of his own linemen. Big guy up front, Wilder. 
he ran right into Wilder, and Wilder, <laughs> just no match for Davis, knocked him flat on his wallet. Yeah, Wilder is not going to like that. Go back in the huddle and don't run up my back. I'm trying to help you out there, buddy. USC, when things are going good on defense, on offense, defensively, they play very well. And they're playing very tough right here against UCLA. Fine, UCLA, balance attack. Second and ten at the Bruin 40. 17 to 14 in favor of UCLA. Big rush, pass complete up the field to Davis. Davis, a looting tackler, still on his feet, breaks through a host of them and takes it to the Trojan 43-yard line. 18-yard gain, not to um, minimize the fine run by Davis, but some terrible tackling by the Trojans, who have been guilty of that many times this season. One of the Trojans shaken up and down on the field. Yeah, really, the guy who set the play up, I think Paul will agree with me, Tommy Maddox doing a great job getting rid of the ball at the last second to the scat back, Ricky Davis. That's Mike Salmon, who's injured. Sophomore uh, safety. The ball will be at the Trojan 43, and the Bruins will have another first and 10. Checking back in is Kevin Williams for UCLA, and Davis will be going out. Well, you hate to see him work on your legs any time. But he had a bruised thigh coming into the ball game, Paul. He got a real shot in the game against Arizona last week. Willie McGinnis is shaken up a bit. I think it's just a cramp over there. Here's another look at uh, where Salmon comes up with the injury. Ooh, Collinquist really popped him. <laughs> well, leave you know, to your own man. You're going to see a nice shot. Number 24, he and Ricky Davis prancing back and forth. And Paul said Collinquist is right there. Boy, he just gets rocked. Wow. Mike's going to say, hey, I'm on your team, buddy. <laughs> Maddox is on a roll. He's completed 10 of the last 11 quarterbacks. All right, the Los Angeles Lakers will take on the Milwaukee Bucks tomorrow night live at the Great Western Forum. Catch all the action. Lakers trying to get to the top of the Pacific Division. You'll see it live on Prime Ticket tomorrow night, 7.30. Watch it. Ball is at the Trojan 43-yard line. First and 10 for the Bruins, 17-14, the Bruins lead. Third period, 6-11 to go. Whoops. I see a bit anxious. Maddox probably changing up at the line of scrimmage. Gives to the second guy, Williams, finds a crease and slides to the 40-yard line. A gain of three, it'll be second and seven at the Trojan 40. Matt Gee there on top of the quick-footed and very elusive running back for the Bruins, Kevin Williams. Yeah, really, once again, just a straightaway handoff to Kevin Williams. I'm surprised he's not really trying to bounce it outside that time. He just took it right between the tackle box and really just trying to grind it out up front. Thought you were going to get a protect them and block them up and throw a post because USC came with a blitz. They feel like they've got some blitz because they're not physical enough to play base defense and stop this team. Maddox operating out of the shotgun on second down, and again he hands off to a running back, and again Williams, but the Trojan defense a bit more alert to this play now than they have been, at least in the first half. Williams dropped for little or no gain, and that'll bring up a third and seven. The ball still at or around the Trojan 40-yard line. That time Trojan, the Trojans with an eight-man front, really keeping a lot of guys up close to the line of scrimmage. Really the defense you wanted to have called against the run on that last play. Well, let me ask you, why are they running? Maddox is 10 of his last 11 throws, Tom Ramsey. You'd think he'd be putting the ball in the air. He's got a hot hand. I would imagine right now Tommy Maddox is going to dial one up. Third down at the Trojan 40. Yes, he's got nine men up on that line of scrimmage, including head-to-head -head coverage on the receivers. And showing blitz and Maddox a long count. Gets the ball back. Throws it up the middle, and the pass is complete inside the 20 La Chapelle. Well, I tell you, that is some kind of magic by Maddox, who I think changed it up, was almost blitzed and sacked and got it away to the La Chapelle, running a one-on-one -on -one route, first down for the Bruins. What a great call. Tommy Maddox really under the gun right here. Everyone's coming. The kitchen sink. He has an uncanny ability to find number 88, Sean La Chapelle, but he knows right where he's going to be. La Chapelle, good for the first down. Kevin Williams with a nice block on a linebacker on the blitz. First down at the 18. Bruins started this drive on their 27-yard line. And Williams dives 
driving straight ahead, gets to the 17. He'll get a yard. It'll be second and nine at that point. The clock shows 401. Bruin fans love it. They're on top, 17 to 14 here at the Coliseum. We're in the third period. Well, it has been a game like most of the games in this series, and I've been privileged to see over 30 of them. There have been a, a stinker or two tossed in along the way. You've got to expect that, but by and large, these have been great confrontations. SC has a lead in the series, 34 wins to 19, seven ties. Play action, Maddox the throw. He's got time, and he's going in the end zone too far. Not even La Chapelle could pull that one in. And if he had, and you can tell by the way Maddox has hands on helmet, that he would have been out of the back line of the end zone. Well, once again, it's the same play they tried in the first half. They have in and out coverage on La Chapelle, who's running a corner route. You're going to see Tommy Maddox just over firing that time to La Chapelle. You don't want to make your living trying to throw into double coverage. I don't care who you are and what receiver you got. Be that time, he should have come off to a single receiver. But, you know, USC is disguising that pretty well, Tom. Blitz, man to man, or double bracket on La Chapelle. Third down and nine, and Maddox, I think, is going to use up a timeout. Charge timeout, UCLA, number one. That'll give the Bruins two, and that might be a precious item when you get down to the closing moments of this game. 328 remaining in the third. 17-14 Bruins. We'll be back after this. to 14 the Bruins lead ball is at the Trojans 17 with the third and nine a drive started back at about the 27 yard line by UCLA La Chapelle and Maddox the principals in this one and of course Kevin Williams well, you know they're going to throw it here. The question is, is USC going to blitz or are they going to cover? Well, we know they're going to double cover La Chapelle. You've got to find the single covered receiver, although UCLA's in their regular offense with tight end and two receivers. My two quarterback experts are calling for a pass. Maddox up under center. Long count. Turns. Going to throw it. Sets. Looks. Throws up the middle. Pass is complete. Inside and into the end zone for a touchdown to Maury Toy. 17 yards and nobody laid a helmet on him. Just a great, great call by the Bruins this time. They stay in their regular offense. Maury Toy, the fullback, you're going to see him sneak through the left side of your screen. He just runs a little delay route, beats his man, Maddox. The ball's behind him. But Toy beats Gee into the end zone. What a great call by Coach Homer Smith. They had a little moment to think about it. A great use of a timeout. A super, super call. It looked like USC was doubling outside, and that's where they go, right? They go to their outside guys. Richardson, La Chapelle especially. And in that situation, when you're playing man and you're doubling outside, you want to go to your underneath guys, your backs, or maybe your tight end crossing. That's exact, exactly what they did. Maddox hitting Toy for Toy, his second touchdown through the air this season. It gives the Bruins a 23 to 14 advantage. That is Matt Gee, senior linebacker for the Trojans, and he was actually hit as Toy went by him, diving to try and nail the elusive Bruin runner was Jason Oliver, and Oliver hit Gee, and down he went. Maddox first touchdown pass in the last four games. 73 yards. He's still down in the end zone. Bruins have taken a 23 to 14 advantage. Now Gee being helped up. Jack Ward down there. You look at that drive, guys, up here in the booth, and you got to be impressed with Maddox. Third down conversions, left and right, and standing in the pocket, finding the guy, and making the plays. And that's how you win football games. Well, right there, Matt Gee, you see how he gets hurt. Ooh. It's Jason Oliver, number four, his own man, who puts a big hit on his knee. That's right. So and he Matt, landed on it. Landed Matt's on his knee. doubling uh, off the field. Two third down drives uh, connected up by Maddox on this, including the last one, third and nine, that ended up for a TD. 68 of the 73 yards they went were through the air, fellas. 
Well, Maddox really having a hot hand right now and doing a nice job spreading it out among his tight end, couple receivers, and most notably, Maury Toy for the touchdown. Perez to see about the PAT. of UCLA. The Trojans have played well in this third period. But they missed one golden opportunity of getting seven or even three points of their own. Had to settle for but seven points in this third period that has 323 remaining. And the Bruins put a very nice drive together going uh, 73 yards. Crosstown flashback. Time to take you back to another great moment in this magnificent series between the Bruins of UCLA and the Trojans of USC. This time we'll take you back to 1952 as you watch Carmichael and Sears. Quite a bit of controversy about this play, gentlemen. That's Carmichael with the ball. Was he down? Did he lateral or did it go forward? Well, too late to argue about it now. Jimmy Sears scampers into the end zone and the Trojans win it, 14 to 12. Ah, that was then. And then is now. And Sandifer is set to kick off for UCLA. The Bruins with a 24-14 advantage. Again, we've got Travis Hanna and Curtis Conway as the deep man awaiting the kickoff. Little short, high pooch punt. Taken by the up man, Conway. In the middle of the 30. Hit, can't get away, and that's where he's going to go down. SC will have it first and 10. Curtis Conway had dropped there at the 30 yard line. Boy, UCLA really respecting the run back ability of Curtis Conway. Do not want to get him the ball with all that field. But you got to wonder, I mean, that's great field position, Tom Ramsey. Start the drive. I'd start every drive on the 30 if I could, or 31. It really is. I believe both teams really having a tough time with both their kickoff people. I just really not getting a lot out of either one of them. Yeah, the kicking game does leave something to be desired so far. Straight up the middle. Estrus Creighton takes it out to the 35. That'll make it second down and about six at the 35. Beautiful night. The Airship Columbia compliments Goodyear Tire and the Goodyear retailers showing us from time to time how beautiful the City of Angels looks on this November 23rd. Like the Queen's Jewel Box, really. There's a look at the Columbia. Reggie Perry is 9 of 19, 133 yards. He has a touchdown in the air and on the ground. Creighton looking for room. Cuts back into the open. 45 50. Down he goes at the Bruin 46 yard line. Brought down by Matt Darby. And let me tell you, he's something. He's a junior college transfer out of, um, of Santiago, Rancho Santiago. And uh, he's a big, long striding type kid. Look at him pick his way. Oh, he's got great ability to make people miss. And look at that acceleration. Earlier on in the season, he had a problem with fumbles. So they put a mattress out in the end zone and have him dive down on the mattress to make sure he doesn't have the ball pop out. So he's home with two balls. So he was practicing that. He probably practiced that uh, when he went home at bed. At I night. was going to say, you could practice that drill at absolutely, home. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's paid off, though. He hasn't fumbled uh, since the start of the season. There's a bobble as he gets the pitch back from Perry. Carries it inside the 45 to the 42. He had uh, 77 yards on 10 carries. Give him about, uh, well, 70, make it 81 carries now and in, in 81 yards and 11 carries. You know, I talked to them last week. I said, he said, I'm not a fumbler. He said, I never fumbled in my life. And he said, when I bobbled the ball and dropped it, he said, a couple of times I wasn't even hit. He said, it was all mental. And it was a big transition. Quantum leap, gentlemen, you know yourself, to playing at a junior college and or coming out of high school and playing at this level of college competition. Second and eight. Ball at the 44-yard line. Perry straight back to throw. Has a ton of time and going downfield. He's got And now for the second time as Henderson and Lambert combined, a Trojan receiver taking the ball, unable to put it in the end zone, though very, very close. This is another audible by Reggie Perry. And Henderson comes out of it, but he can't get there in time. You knew where he was going to throw the backside post. 
Henderson tried to get there, but it was just a fine throw and a great catch by Morton. They put it down at the six-yard line. It'll be first and goal at that point. SC trailing by 10, 24-14. We're still in the third period. On a delay, they give to Creighton. Creighton inside to about the three-yard line. They ran a little uh, fake there. Started Creighton to the right side, had it to him, and he cut back against the flow, but the flow was pretty much jammed up right at the goal line. Not much room. Well, it really looks as though that offensive line of USC really starting to mash. They gave Perry all kinds of time to unload the ball in that last one, and had them doing a fine job on the running play up front. Trojan fans hoping that they can punch this one into the end zone to get back to within three. They trail by ten. Second and goal at the three. Perry fumbles it, picks it up. He was on the ground with his knee when he picked the ball back up, and so it'll be third and goal, and the ball now will be back at the six-yard line. Well, this has been a... Uh, a litany of mistakes throughout the entire season. Somebody, as Coach Smith looks on, always finds a way to just make the worst possible scenario. An illegal procedure here, a missed snap there. That's what the problem's been for them this year. End of the third period, Bruins lead 24-14. We'll be back. down and goal we start the fourth period with the Trojans on the Bruins six yard line UCLA up by 10 and a great look at the grand old lady the Coliseum on a beautiful November evening here in the city of the Angels well guys I guess the first thing is handle the snap from center now what are you going to call for the Trojans here? assuming you get the snap from center I like Roland Perry out give him the option of running or throwing the football we shall see what we shall see. How about you, Ramsey? Do you concur? He's in trouble. Throws it. Caught in the end zone by Yanni Jackson. Jackson's second touchdown catch of the year. Perry's third touchdown toss. A six-yarder. And I don't know if he rolled out, but I do know SC put it in the end zone, Paul. So I'll give you at least half a credit. Give me half credit on that. <laughs> It was a nice play by Perry. He wanted to go to the Creighton in the flat and a little pick play. Assuming UCLA was playing man coverage, but they covered him. They played zone, and he comes off nicely to his secondary receiver, Yanni Jackson. Let me tell you, Perry has scored one with an over-the-top and thrown two touchdown tosses here, and one has to admire his uh, own personal attitude at being sidelined last week and not starting to be that mentally aware and ready to play this probably the biggest football game he's ever been around. No question. To play like he's playing it, a lot of guys would go in the tank. A lot of guys would, would say, hey, you know, it's not my team anymore, and I, I'll just go out there and go through the motions. But he wants to play well, and he tries hard. He's a good guy. His problem, I think, most of the year has been more mental than physical. Well, and I think we brought the subject up on several telecasts, and I noted that Tom Ramsey asked you about it today, whether or not some of the plays were badly suited for him as well on some of the drives. Yeah, I think it's really possible to overcoach an individual. And Reggie Perry looks, he looks more like a natural athlete. You want to give him maybe a little less on the game plan and just let him play against the defense. Let him react. What a pretty baby. All right, seven plays, 69 yards, 24-21. Today's quarter notes brought to you by Great Western's family of companies, $40 billion strong. Richardson fumbles. SC fails to capitalize. Maury Toy gets a touchdown toss. Reggie Perry gets one. Third quarter yardage. Trojans 159, UCLA 79. That does not surprise me, Tom Ramsey. SC all year long has somehow just left a wake-up call for the third period. I don't quite understand it. Neither does Paul McDonald. We kept saying that Coach Smith should give us halftime talk before the game, but... <laughs> Evidently, he hasn't done that. They do come to play in the second half. Richardson and Davis await the kickoff. Not all that deep. Coming to Richardson, out at the 10, 15, in a pile of people. And down he goes at the 24, and I'm sure our viewers saw a lot of arms in there trying to pop that football loose. A junior boy who had an interception on the kickoff in this third period, or I should say a fumble recovery, was one of those in there on the tackle. Now, the veteran team 
that UCLA's offense is it'll be interesting Tom Rams to see how they respond and what they do this is a critical series for them oh it really is Tommy Maddox we'll see how he guides him Tommy really still a youngster back there but really has matured over the course of the last two years he took him 73 yards the last time they handed him the football little play action he's back to throw airs it out on the far side a diving acrobatic beautiful catch by Richardson 13 yards, here's Bill McDonald down in the field. All right, Tom, bad news for USC. The shirt says, have faith and fun and beat UCLA. He's not out on the field. His name, Matt Key, out for the game with a sprained knee. Big leader for the USC defense. They're going to have to replace him here in the all-important fourth. Let's go back upstairs. All right, and the really big disappointment is that, that Matt Key is a senior, and this will be his last game regular season for USC. I'm sure he knows how badly he wants to be in there for the second half. There's a little shovel ahead to Williams. Trojans are waiting for that, and they stop him at the 36-yard line. Gain of one, second and nine at the Bruin 36. That's an awfully tough call there. They had uh, a shovel pass on, but really to the, they're going to the wide side of the field. The SC defense slanting that time to the wide side of the field. Really not the right play dialed up. No, exactly right. You read the outside defensive end. If he goes up, Phil, you pitch it. But they had all the lanes filled on that one. In replacing Gee is Brian Williams, the freshman from Dallas, Texas. High formation, second and nine, Tom Maddox at his own 36. Play action, back to draw. Has time and airs it out deep downfield. It is going to be tipped away. If Stefan Pace didn't put a hand on it, Henry would have had the foot. Excuse me, Holmes would have had it for still another interception. The Tommy Maddox that time really caught once again throwing into double coverage, trying to get Paul Richardson on a post. And what you couldn't see was the strong safety number nine right there. Stefan Pace turned when Richardson was going to the post and therefore created a double coverage right there. And Calvin Holmes almost coming down with an interception. Would have been his second of the night and his third of the year, but it would have been. Third down and nine at the 36. Chappelle in the slot left. Long count by Maddox. Sets the throw, steps up, gets rushed, gets hit. Down he goes. He had all the time in the world, it seemed, but credit the Trojan secondary, I would guess, quarterbacks to taking away any possible receivers, and Terry McDaniels jerked him off his feet as he went by. Well, he had some time for an instant while he set up but obviously he couldn't see very well so moved up to see better and that's when he was taken down La Chapelle went right around Hollenquist he was open on that one if he had time or could see him well that's a tough cover for a linebacker Sean La Chapelle oh. I'll tell you even though Hollenquist is a is a player of considerable talent back to kick Shager hits it a very high hanger fair catch is the signal taken by Curtis Conway 38 yards no return SC will start at the Trojan 25 yard line 1256 remaining in this one the Bruins lead by three we'll be back Joel Chamberlain at the controls of the airship Columbia compliments Goodyear tires and your local Goodyear retailer there's Joel hi captain doing a nice job cameraman is Richard Markle and we're indebted to you gentlemen with some beautiful shots here at the Coliseum on this Saturday afternoon and evening. SC first down at its own 25-yard line, down by three. Interesting stat Dennis handed me. Last seven passes attempted by Reggie Perry have been complete. He's looking for all of it. Going down the side to Morton, too far off the field of play. Big coverage down there by Henderson. Morton had a lot of company. Well, he got greedy there, Tom. He did. Uh, there were double coverage on Morton, but he had all kinds of time, so he figured, well, why don't I just throw one up? That's where you've got a little bit of the inexperience, where you pull it down and you find another guy. If you get five or six yards, that's okay. You're looking at second and four, not second and ten. Number nine is Henderson. Number 16, Reggie Perry. Not Rodney Pete, as I named him a about an hour ago, he's not Paul McDonald either. <laughs> Same number. They hand it off on a delay, and boy, the Bruins are waiting for Esther Strayton when they drop him for a loss back at about the 23, 24 yard line. Well, Brian Kelly, number 65, really played solid football for the Bruins. It's really his first season, and he's really been injury free. I know Coach Bob Field 
they, they wanted the big kid from Torrance to, to really play to his full potential, but right there, he's really making a big stop for the Bruins. Literally no place for Creighton to run. There was nothing but blue shirts and uh, white shirts in front of him, and he had no place to go. And now into the game comes Wallace. Wide to the left is Hannah. Short side of the field is Martin. Perry in the eye. Gives it to his, oh, play act. No, he did give it to Creighton. Great fake. Out to the 31-yard line, but short of the first down. And that's going to bring up fourth down at the Trojan 31 and about four yards to go and a kicking situation. He almost popped that one. You wonder, well, why do you call a running play on third and 11? Well, generally you don't want to do that, but when you have the nickel in there, you've got four down linemen, two of them linebackers, that you can probably make a big hole, and that's what they did. They created a huge hole, and he was one tackle away, really, from going a, a long way, I think. All right, Ron Dale stands back, waiting to kick it away, and downfield, La Chapelle. Better snap this time, and a fine kick by Dale drives La Chapelle back to his 24. Starts one way, breaks a tackle, comes back. Down he goes at the 27-yard line. 45 yards on the kick and four yards on the return, and you have to be impressed by La Chapelle. All right, 11-17 to go in the fourth. Bruins lead by three. We'll be back. Bruins lead 24-21, 11-17 remaining here in the fourth period. And UCLA will take over with the ball on their, uh, they have it on their 27-yard line with a first and 10. Take a moment to thank our crew in the booth here as Maddox checks the sidelines. Tom Ramsey and Paul McDonald, of course, and Dr. Bob Francis, Sandy Nanhoff, Dennis Benishian, and of course, Mike Corsall. Invaluable assistance. We hope you've enjoyed the telecast so far. And a corker, we think, we didn't expect anything less than when these two get together. Again, Maddox with a long count. And he'll pitch that option again. This time, Williams is pulled down. That's the play they ran for 72 yards, Tom Ramsey. Didn't work this time. Gideon Merle sensed it, was in quickly on top of Kevin Williams. I I'm kind of surprised. You see, only running the option out of the split backs, and I think Paul will agree with me. Maybe they were in the wrong formation. You see Maddox turn to look to pitch, and he had to wait, and all of a sudden, Burrell comes by and makes a great play on Kevin Williams. It's like Williams had to catch up with him. And he was on, you know, in the wrong position. Merle Batman, they call him, made a nice play, big play. And only a sophomore, and this is, of course, a very young USC team, but you've heard that all season long, haven't you? Maddox at his own 17 now. Second down and 20, back to throw, has time over the middle. Pass is complete to Toy. Nice move, eludes a couple more tacklers, and takes it back to the 29-yard line for a 12-yard pickup, making it third and eight. Right there, Maddox so, showing great maturity, not going after the whole chunk of yardage, getting half of it. Toy does a nice job sitting down in the zone, catching the ball, trying to get up for some more yardage. Now they're faced with a third eight as opposed to maybe a third 17. Terry Donahue looks on. You've got to be impressed, Paul McDonald, with the ability of these backs that UCLA has once they catch it. They make you miss one, two, three times. That's why you get in the ball, they're going to get you some extra yardage. Maddox now at his own 29 yard line. Third down, back to throw, sets over the middle, tipped, incomplete. The pass intended for La Chapelle. Mike Salmon was there and chasing it way back downfield with Stefan Pace. And Maddox comes up empty and the Bruins will kick it back to SC. Well, we've got ourselves a football game. 24-21, a three-point game. Here's another look. Well, Maddox, he's looking left. All of a sudden, he's, he spots La Chapelle, but the ball just gets away from him, really. You see, once again, they're doing a little in-and-out coverage on La Chapelle. He comes running across the middle, free safety salmon right there to make the play. you got to put it on his numbers, right, Tom? you got to put it. When they go across the middle, if you, if you throw it high, that's what's going to happen, a tip, and a lot of times you get it picked off. Shager kicks it. Not only that, you may lose that wide receiver. Yeah. It's a friend, too, fellas. Fair catch is signaled for by Curtis Conway. 38 yards, no return. Yeah, you stretch that guy out. As good a receiver as he is, he's just fair game. Looks like free lunch. And I tell you, he may not come back to the huddle. If he does, I'm going to punch you right through your face mask. Especially his good buddy, uh, Sean LaChapelle. He's going to say, hey, Tommy, keep it down next time, you know? I want to play uh, a couple more, a couple more years with you. All right, we've got a moment here. Let's take you back to another great, exciting moment in this crosstown rivalry. 
We're going to go back to Gary Feven and company. Do you remember the day when SC was ahead 16 to 7? Feven rallying the Bruins, the Bruins, running back to pass, sets, puts it in the air, and Kurt Altenberg is there to grab it. What a great day for the UCLA Bruins. That was back in 1965. Creighton taking it on the play, gets out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. Here's another look at that Altenburg catch of the toss by Gary Beban. They rallied from 16 to 7 to win it 20 to 16 back in 1965. I was going to say, I'm awfully happy we got to show Kurt Altenburg. He's one of my neighbors. He would have been oh. awfully <laughs> upset if, it, if we started talking about him and didn't deliver the picture. We could have showed Witcher, you know. Witcher <laughs> caught one in that same ball game, Tom Ramsey. It was truly a great, a great comeback for the Bruins. All right, it's going to be uh, second down now for the Trojans at the SC 36. Second and about eight. Much there on the handoff up the middle up to about the 38 yard line is on that brings up a third down maybe I'm belaboring the obvious but don't you have to put the ball in the air a little bit here to try to get this offense moving I don't know you just don't want to put Reggie Perry in too many third down situations where he's got to come up with a play yeah. throw it on first down when you throw it throw it on second meet him medium uh, a lot easier you got man coverage his own coverage with corners off this is a lot more difficult. They've got five DBs in. They're going to bracket and double. A lot more involved in reading coverage. Third and five now. Perry out of the shotgun. Has some time. Throws it. Oh, had his man. Threw it too far. A diving try by Wallace, and SC will be forced to kick it away. Goodwin was there defensively, but Perry just let him too far or threw it too out in front. Man had no chance. Yeah, he had it. I was going to say, I'm sorry, Paul, Marv Goodwin really did make a fine play and really expected Perry had to be pinpoint passing that time, just a hair off. Well, the Trojans can't move it, and the Bruins now will await the punt by Dale, and it's going to be, who else? La Chapelle standing back at the 20. He's only a junior, too, La Chapelle. <laughs> Signals for the fair catch at the 26-yard line, maybe the 27. 34-yard punt, no return, and UCLA will take over at uh, 8.44 remaining, and they lead by three. We'll be back. Today's game is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. By Great Western's family of companies, $40 billion strong. And by New Coors Drive, double chilled for a finish as clean as ice. Twenty-four, twenty-one. Bruins take over on their own twenty-seven yard line. Maddox hands off to his tailback. And Kevin Williams gets out to about the 29, maybe the 30. Williams had 133 yards in the first half, and he's been minus five in the second half so far. And of that 133 in the first half, he had a 72-yard touchdown scramble. Paul McDonald and Tom Ramsey are with me in the booth, and you guys played. Paul, you were two for two against the Bruins, weren't you? And Tom, you were two and two, were you not? Yes, that's yeah. correct. I want you to think about your most memorable, maybe the win. I know Ramsey uh, had two victories, and of course McDonald played in that 49 team that was just something else. Quick out down the side, great leaping catch by La Chapelle. Who else? Jason Oliver was there, 19 yards. It'll be first and 10 Bruins out at the 49-yard line. How about you, Tom Ramsey, the best of your two wins? Well, I have to say, right here, a, a quick throw. I just got to make mention Tommy Maddox and Sean LaChapelle who just really makes a great catch over Jason Oliver. I'd say the greatest uh, moment probably was when we beat them in 82. It just culminated a lot of years of a lot of hard work. Carl Morgan made a great play on Scott Tinsley to end the game on the two-point conversion. 2019, wasn't it, in the Rose Bowl, huh? All right, 94 yards on five grabs by LaChapelle. Williams looking for running room. Gets back to the line of scrimmage and maybe gets to the 49 for a gain of two, second and eight. The 49 team, of course, might have been the greatest team SC's, uh, 79 team, the greatest team SC ever had. I'm not that old yet, Tom, but uh, <laughs> we did win 49 to 14. You're right. I think that was obviously putting everything together. We played a great game against UCLA. We didn't have a great year that year. 
and uh, came out on top. But the UB4 in 78, much better contest. Went back and forth, and I was able to throw a couple touchdown passes. That was a really satisfying victory, too. Second down and call it a long eight. The ball at midfield. Bruins have it. Maddox to throw. Sets. Dances about. Over the middle. Complete to the 45-yard line. Over there defensively, that's Brian Williams. Bottom of the pile for the Trojans. The catch made by Daly, the tight end. That was Gideon Murrow. They've probably gone to Daly more in this ballgame than they have in the last half a dozen. Isn't that right, Tom? Yeah, they really have. I think uh, SC, knowing that they've been so popular, the wideouts, Maddox going to him, that uh, Daly really becomes a factor as well as the backs. Third down, four yards to go. Bruins with Richardson and LaChapelle flanked wide to the left. Maddox rolling to throw, finds some room, throws it, incomplete. Well, he had La Chapelle and he had Richardson, and he was kind of between a rock and a hard place. He threw it between the two, and you can tell by the look on his face that he's not too pleased with what he did. It really wasn't that time. I believe it was Stephon Pace coming off, coming out from a strong safety position, really putting a lot of pressure and LaChapelle not even attempting to go for the ball. You're going to see he's open and I don't know if Tommy just flat out misses him or he's trying to hit the wideout on the outside. LaChapelle probably goes to the sidelines and says, listen, Rooms, about 20 minutes ago you had me over the middle strung out to dry and now you ignore me. <laughs> oh, long time on the punt by Shager. Fair catch, going to take a Bruin bounce and roll inside the 10, the 5. Trojans will start at the 4-yard line. Well, 41 yards, no return. And the Trojans, who've been backed up to the wall all year long, start now at their own 4-yard line. Let's go to Bill McDonald. All right, fair is fair. We had Pat Hayden earlier, so why not? A couple of current Rams this time, Daryl Hanley and Roman Pfeiffer, go off on this series, if you would, Daryl, because I know you're the mouth that roars sometimes. Uh, who, me? Yeah, no, yeah. not me. How you, how you doing, Pat? <laughs> how, how about USC, UCLA, your favorite moment? I hope the Bulls win. That's all I have to say. I hope they will have a lot of money riding on this game. <laughs> all right, quickly, Roman, a little worried because of last year, I mean, fourth quarter, SC coming back again. Yeah, I always felt like USC got all the breaks, so I hope the, uh, we can pull it out right now. Here's Perry rolling out of the end zone, throws, pass up at the 15-yard line is incomplete. Banta was the intended receiver, and it was right straight through his hands and out of bounds. Let's go back to Bill again. All right, Tom, thanks. Real quickly, Monday night football, Niners coming to town. Talk to me about it. It's going to be a big game for us. Um, this is almost like our, our first Super Bowl this week, and our next Super Bowl is next week, so... No, uh, we always we always play the Niners stuff. They always play the stuff. Big game. All right, Daryl. Good to see you. Roman, great rookie year. All right, let's go back upstairs. 84,623 on hand for this one. Another great game and truly college football's last intra-city rivalry and what a big show it is. Delay. Great. Up the middle into the secondary. Who might have been a touchdown saving tackle at the 15-yard line. Up there to make the hit was Darby and <laughs> Estrus Creighton looked like he was headed for the uh, pair style lane. 100 yard game for Creighton at 185 last week, Paul. Well, he's playing well. Most of those in the third quarter and hit now the fourth quarter, but a great cut to break it inside. That play is designed to go outside. Guard tackle kicked out, and when he saw that hole, he really hit it. Going to bring it into measure. It'll either be third down and inches or first down for the Trojans. Any part of the football. First down. Tom Kelly, you, you mentioned a minute ago, you asked about great moments. I think Paul will agree. When you play in this game, there's so many great moments. You really can't pick out one or two that just stand out in your mind. The entire rivalry, the stadium just heats up. There's an air about this rivalry that is second to none. And of course, when you two guys played it, this was everybody's home field, wasn't it? That's right. When you walk out in that field, it's something special a game that has seen brothers play against brothers, Rod and Fred McNeil for a couple. The Reese brothers. That's this Creighton straight ahead. A lot of people there. Stacy Argo meets him first and stops him after a short carry up to about the 18-yard line. Second and six at the 18. 517. Now the clock becomes an important factor as well. SC trailing by three. Needs to put a drive of 
some length, obviously, together to see if they can give Dudem a chance to tie the game. I don't know if it came down to that, whether you'd go for the tie. I don't know. The Trojans are going nowhere this year. They would salvage some part of the season with a four and seven mark. The Bruins are headed to play Illinois in the Hancock Bowl. Uh, you got to go for the touchdown. You go for the win. They just got to get themselves in position to do that. Perry, play action. Rolling back the throw. Pressure over the middle. Caught by Yanni Jackson for the first down. I don't know. Maybe it's the turf. Maybe the routes they're running, but I've seen two guys could have been in the end zone diving stumbling falling down here's jackson down that's uh, really difficult look reggie's going to the left he's throwing backwards to the right very difficult but he keeps the ball down low it's not going to get tipped not going to get picked off and jackson makes sure that it's not it just falls on him. so the drive with 426 and the clock moving continues uh, the ball at the trojan 27 yard line for the first and ten Bruins lead, 24-21. Lester Strayton finds an opening into the secondary. Cut back, needed a block. Couldn't quite get one, but he does pick up 14 yards out to the 41. And a first and 10. He goes well over the 100 now, but 114 yards or so. Again, just the ISO play. What a great block. Hole open, wide open. When you double-team the inside guys like that, the linebackers and the nose, man, you're going to have big holes. I was going to say, that offensive line doing a great job locking up with people up front, really handling defensive line of UCLA. And they haven't had teams do that all, all year long, have they, Tom? No, they've really played each team differently. I'm sorry. That's perfectly all right. Creighton again takes the handoff and runs right into big number 49, and that's uh, Walker, Bruce Walker, who's the middle guard. Creighton getting a couple more as he gets out to the 43. Bruce Walker, it's, all, it's awfully hard, hard to handle Bruce Walker. He goes about 299 for you up front, number 49 there. And when you say when you run into him, you run into a big brick wall. Creighton's got 121 yards and 19 carries. Bruins lead 24-21. Bit better than three minutes remaining in the fourth period. And carries on his own 44. Play action. Trouble. Hit. Stop. Thrown for a loss. In there blitzing number 43, Matt Darby. And he throws Perry for a huge loss back at the 34. Well, right there, the senior, Matt Darby, the All-American candidate, coming up with a huge play, blitzing off the open corner here to the wide side. They beat UCLA on a number of occasions on the bootleg tonight. Coach Bob Field bringing Darby this time. Darby coming up with a big play. Yeah, by the time Perry turned around, he was in his face. Really couldn't do anything with it. Nobody laid a helmet or no, a pad no. on Darby. He was just all by himself. Made you think they had 12 guys on the field. In fact, Perry probably thought they did. <laughs> Now, third and 17 from his own 35. Great catch by his Hanna. Hanna's got the first down at the Bruins 42. Henderson made the stop. 23 yards, and that is some kind of a gutty call and throw. It was a great play by Reggie Perry on a crossing route and they're going to go from the line here but you can't let that receiver get on the inside when you're playing man underneath that's the vulnerable area and they got it to travis Hanna. all right there's no huddle for the trojans with 212 remaining in the fourth quarter 24 21 the bruins lead out of the shotgun perry with time looks throws almost intercepted almost threw it into the hands of cole who is talking to himself right now about how could my left hand and my right hand not close on that football? Well, if Randy Cole makes this play, it, it looks like they've blocked the win pretty well, but Cole is going to remember. Now, he's going to remember this play the rest of his life. I promise you that one. That's part of the trouble with this game, really, if there is a <laughs> troublesome moment, is that good or bad, whatever happens, you know you got to live with it the rest of your life, at least for a year, because you're going to see all these guys back and forth, maybe for the rest of your life. Second down. They give it to Creighton into the secondary, and he's pulled down at the 39-yard line. It'll be third down at the 39, and about eight yards to go. Seven, and clock showing a minute 50, and SC has got three timeouts. 
Well, SC has three timeouts, but they're not now's, using now's any a, of them. Now's a great time to take a timeout. Well, they've got to do something. They can't they gotta, stand around with they their they got to get to the line and call the play or take a timeout. There's some miscommunication. They're, they're not doing a thing. With a minute 32 and 10 seconds have gone off this clock, and they haven't used the clock to stop the play. Straight ahead, flag, and there's a late flag. That was offensive uh, dead ball. Illegal procedure. I don't know why they let that play even go. No, see how late the flag was. So Are you kidding? I was halfway down the field. They had five-yard gain. Gentlemen, I can't. It's impossible to misuse the clock as badly as the Trojans have. Can get a five-yard penalty on top of it. They've lost 20 seconds of precious time and five yards in addition to it. And that is bad game management. Yeah, absolutely. When you have three timeouts and you run the ball and you're in that field position, you might as well take a timeout. Hey, Reggie Perry hasn't been in that situation all that long. Bring him off to the sidelines and talk about it. No, but there are Little others. Motion on the offense. The penalty is refused. Why not? Fourth down. Fourth down. You've lost uh, no yards, but you've lost the clock. And now you're faced with a fourth down and about seven. At the 37, now it's going to be fourth and five. Well, now you got to take a timeout because the clock's moving. Yes, well, the clock is running. Restart the clock. Church timeout, USC, now that, number one. That is, that is really, well, that is bad game management, no question about it. You waste 20-some seconds, you don't take a timeout, then you lose five because your team is not prepared for the play they're going to run, and now you find yourself faced with a deficit of three, the ball at the Bruin 37, and a fourth down and five. The uh, Isuzu trivia quiz question that we gave you some time ago. The four running backs to go for more than 200 yards in a game in this series, three of them won Heisman trophies. But the guy who had the most yards was Gaston Green, who is now galloping around in the pro ranks. Marcus Allen, Garrett, and Simpson, all Heisman trophy winners. It's a pretty good group right there. Yeah. I take at least two of them. Hey, my back field. 19 to go. John. Trojans lose this game. They can look to their game management right down here in the last two minutes of play. Well, we've seen this happen a couple different times, and when you get down with under two minutes, it's critical. The seconds are critical when you, especially when you have three timeouts. You've got a young team. You need to get them together, settle them down, talk about it. The clock winding down, sitting over third and ten or third and nine and you've got a young quarterback, and you're going to have some confusion. It's a great way to, to calm everybody down, get them off to the sidelines and talk about what they're going to do. Well, the old adage of waste not, want not, never more true than in this instance. Now with a minute 19 and a fourth down and five, Reggie Perry will be asked to keep the drive alive. If he fails on this fourth down attempt, this ball game will be over. For all intents and purposes. Here come the Bruins. Perry steps up, and he has dropped. The ball is loose. UCLA recovers, and that gentleman might very well be the game. Now we've got a whole lot of pushing and shoving going on, and the flags are flying, and uh, we'll have an unsportsmanlike here, I'm sure. Well, credit Arnold Ale. Mr. Ale, number 97, comes by Reggie Perry and just strips him from behind. Mike Shalinski, number 98, coming up with the football. But Arnold Ale coming out of blitz, making the big play tonight for UCLA. Dead ball, personal foul against USC. The player is ejected, 15 yards, first down, UCLA. So the Trojans had a player ejected for the personal foul. But that is just a postscript to a very disappointing series of events. And the Trojans really, in, in point of fact, have no one to blame but themselves. Well, Reggie Perry didn't have a lot of chance there. Great pressure from the outside. And the penalty at the end of the play was just frustration of a long, difficult season. Right here, Arnold Ale. Michael Williams coming out of bliss, but it's Ale right there who makes the big hit on Perry. The ball is loose, and Shalinski right there to make the play. And did Terry Donahue like it? Well, you better believe it. He's been looking for a victory over the Trojans for the last four years. Back 
to pass Maddox. No, hands off to his tailback, Williams. And, of course, they'll just run it into the line. And now the Trojans will, of course, have two timeouts, and they can use them to no avail. Minute First seven to go. 24-21, Bruins will be back. We've got a minute seven to go in this ball game. The Bruins lead 24-21, and the ball is at the Trojan 44. Well, post-mortem wise, they'll look back to that fourth and two at the Bruin 11, when the Trojans elected to go for three with Dudum, a walk-on field goal man, missing it. And then, of course, the Bruins turned around and started right back down the field and went 90 yards for their touchdown. And then the wasting of precious moments out here and the inability to call a timeout to give Perry a third down situation that he might be able to live with. Certainly a fourth down situation he could handle. But a season of errors and mistakes by the Trojans, and this game today just piled a couple of more for the critics to roast upon. Huh? Well, I tell you what, you gotta look on the other side of the coin. The Bruins now go into the, the El Paso Bowl, the John Hancock Bowl, 8-3 really gives them a, a big boost. And oh, this absolutely. game meant so much to UCLA. First of all, it was one of their team goals at the beginning of the season, an awfully big day for UCLA. Yeah. And of course, you know, I think um, Illinois lost today. If memory serves, Michigan State rose up and beat the Illini. And of course, Stanford defeated California, which is gonna take some luster off their season. And Dennis Green has a great year. Right here, it's 24-21. The Trojans are trailing. Remember, for all your scores, highlights, interviews, and more, we invite you to turn on Press Box. Larry Burnett, Alan Massingale, and the rest of the Press Box team comes your way Sunday through Friday at 10 and only on Prime Ticket. Tom Rams, it's got to be a sweet victory. You mentioned it. The seniors haven't won, have they? Haven't no. not beat USC. No. Three victories for the Trojans, uh, no losses in one tie in the last four games, and SC has won five of the last six. Right. But uh, Reggie Perry, I think, acquitted himself well today, gentlemen. He scored one through two touchdown passes, and one certainly cannot fault him. Uh, Perry was just under orders and uh, had someone just called timeout for him why the game might be hanging in the balance, as it is. With a minute to go, the Bruins have it at the Trojan 44. Third down and 10. The give to the fullback and Smith just pulls his way to the 41. 55 seconds remain. SC is out of timeouts. Clock is running. 51. Larry Smith on the sidelines. The other thing is UCLA is coming off two losing seasons. Right, Tom Ramsey? And back to the Bulls again. For Terry back to the Bulls. So it's a big, big step for them. For USC, they've got a long way to go, but they've got 18 senior, 18 returning starters coming back. So they've got something to look forward to next season. They'll be three and eight, and the Bruins are content to let that clock run down. It'll be fourth down if and when they get whistled to the line of scrimmage. Now they're going to get a penalty because the 25 second clock. Good ball delay a game on the offense. The down remains four. It'll be fourth down and nine now. They'll walk it back five yards to about the Trojan 46-yard line. Dennis, thank you. What uh, great asset you've been throughout the season. Dennis Manishian, who is just a, a stat man par excellence. And Tom Ramsey, what a pleasure to see you again, quarterback. I, every time I see you, I think of the old L.A. Express in your <laughs> out there. Huh? Didn't know he played for Hazel, did you? Oh. Paul McDonald. And thank you, Paul. I forgot that. I've had a great time with you this year. Thank you. Fortunately, it has been a better year for the Trojans, oh. but there's always next year, right? Well, hope springs eternal, but thank you. I certainly have enjoyed being with you. Let's not forget my partner in crime, Bill oh, McDonald, yeah. down well, he's, the he's dancing on the sidelines. Now, <laughs> <laughs> um, they're going to kick it. Well, one last gasp. Conway, did he signal for the fair catch, but he fumbled the ball, and he'll do well to recover it. At the seven-yard line, SC recovers. They are, well, they're going to be down at the 10. 90 yards away in seven seconds. Is O.J. doing anything this afternoon, Paul McConnell? <laughs> <laughs> Probably only have one play left, maybe maybe two but it doesn't look if they want to try a trick play it's probably gonna be a one play shot the hail mary we hope for an interference call but uh it looks pretty bleak the Bruins are going to take a time out and talk about it 
Harry Donahue, even with victory almost assured him, has not allowed himself not yet. an expression of a smile. Still seven seconds to go. <laughs> it's happened before. He's not going to take the chance it'll happen again. Well, there have been some moments in this game and others here at the Coliseum that have turned from sweet to truly bittersweet. But with seven seconds left and 90 yards away from the end zone, that pretty well gives you the idea of how the Trojans feel across the way. They huddle with their coach, Larry Smith. I would imagine you're right, whoever said Hail Mary and hope for a flag. That's what you'll see what happens. That is what that is. Go up. Well, the Trojans played well against a fine Bruin team, a much improved Bruin team from last year. They have nothing to be ashamed of, but I know they really felt like they needed a victory today to give them some hope, some confidence for the next year. Losing six in a row certainly isn't going to do that. It's going to be a long offseason, a tough recruiting year to go into everyone's homes to try and get those high school, those top high school athletes to come to USC. I was going to say one of the most important aspects of this game, in, in terms of the city and, and how everyone perceives it, the recruiting battle really is won or lost on how this game swings. Well, three down linemen and uh, down the field, eight other guys. Perry, as the clock ticks down, four seconds. It's in the air, tipped, almost caught, almost intercepted. It's over. The Bruins win it, 24-21. And a joyous, gutty little band from Westwood carries Terry Donahue on their shoulders as he goes over to see Larry Smith. For Terry, it's been a long time between sips, but his Bruins are 8-3 and three and headed for the Hancock Bowl in El Paso against Illinois. What an exciting football game. When we started it all, we told you we couldn't promise you a 45-42, but it was a good ball game, and Reggie Perry acquitted himself well as he ran for a touchdown and threw for two others, and Tommy Maddox had a good ball game. Didn't do the passing and getting it in the end zone through the air that we expected he would, but Maddox had a fine ball game nonetheless. And the entire Bruin ball club built up a lead that SC could not overcome. We'll be back with a final comment. Final score again, 24-21, UCLA. They'll be dancing in Westwood tonight. Bruins 24, Trojans 21. Our Southwest Airlines player of the game is Kevin Williams. Remember what fares were like before Southwest Airlines? Impressive, weren't they? 21 carries, 131 yards, a touchdown, including a 72-yard run, and he goes into the 1,000-yard category this year. With his coach, Terry Donahue, on the field, here's Bill McDonald. All right, Terry Donahue, Kevin Williams, coach, I've never seen you more emotional getting into this week for this game. Tell us how you really feel about this win. You were so excited. Well, it's a great win. We're, uh, I'm really happy for Kevin and all these guys, our coaches. We worked hard, and it, we needed to get over this hump. Uh, we hadn't won this game for four years. It was vital that we win it, and uh, we had a great season. We, we ended the year 8-3, and three, winning year, beating SC, going to the Hancock Bowl. Can't get much better. All right, stay here one second. Kevin, the option play worked all season long. Tommy runs it so well. And you must be so proud of the way this team does. And you hung in there all season long. Like, like I said, you know, about the option play, it was one of those deals that it was always up. And when they're in, when they're in the right defense, we call it, and we got them. We got them again with it. Terry, I think the word you used so often was fun, and fun is back in Westwood now, isn't it? Well, it's fun tonight, I'll tell you that. Uh, it was just uh, a night that we played our hearts out. SC played their hearts out. It was a... You know, uh, people said, well, the teams weren't great teams, but it was a classic uh, UCLA-SC game, and the fans had to love it, and the Bruins love it tonight. All right, Terry, go talk to your guys. All right, great win. Look at them. <laughs> that is what is called excitement here at the Coliseum. Big win for UCLA. Let's go back up to the boys in the booth. All right, Bill, thank you. Our congratulations to Terry Donahue, whose team picks up a win here today, and, of course, to Kevin Williams, our player of the game. I want to say goodbye for Bill McDonald and for uh, Tom Ramsey and Paul McDonald. Coming up next, Arizona and Arizona State. I'm Tom Kelly from the Coliseum. Good night.